Can track, yeah. can track. Uh, Audrey, I see you got the uh, got the Miller Light going the on. Fine Pilsner beer, oh, Miller Light. It's one yes. of the finest. At least it's not a, a damn a damn Bud Light. Got him. Oh, That's got right. Him. Got him. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking got him. Got got their asses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I make my own T slur semen, so I don't need. I don't need Bud Light. Hey. I don't need it. So many possible worlds, but we got this one. Welcome to the worst of all possible worlds, the first and only podcast to make their own tea slur. JJ, don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> I didn't say it! <laughs> tea slur semen. I'm the worst of all possible AJs. I'm the worst of all possible Brian's. And I'm the worst of all possible Josh's. And we're and off re- to listeners, a no, great no, no, no. Sorry, Josh. Sorry, Josh. But mm. no, you, listeners, I need you to know that we did about five takes of yeah. that. Yeah. And AJ yeah. simply refused to do a good one. <laughs> Jesus. I kept saying serum instead of semen. It's hard. They're both the same that's why thing. He, that's why when you hear the S sound, it goes on for 12 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's a, long, it's a long time. I'm so sorry. But hey, we got some great guests here today. We do. We do. We've got uh, Audrey and Dono from Radio Free Tote Bag, the relationship podcast. Hey, folks, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves and what it is that you do on your show? Uh, mostly we produce uh, tea slur semen. Mm. It's kind of the niche that we have. <laughs> it. Got it in That's one. That's how you say it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> easy. Got it in one. Auditory juices for the for the people. Uh, we're, we're, we're a dating advice show. We've been going for five and a half years now. Uh, wow. We mostly have people writing questions to us and we have guests on who help us answer those questions. Uh, we've had a range of people. We've had uh, some of whom are in a group chat with some of us. It's true. Uh, Max from Eve six. We had a uh, front on, we had John McAfee on John at one point for some you reason. Did? Oh, I dear. missed that one. Holy <laughs> shit. It's way back there. It's episode 100. 101 because 100 was the clip show. Oh, uh, 100 was the clip yeah, show. Yeah. Cause he, he died a long time ago. He now. Did. He did. <laughs> it's been and some time. I can't help but feel us. partially responsible because, uh, we asked, Janice, uh, his wife, and uh-huh. him came on the program, and we asked them, "So where have you been wandering? If you're such a wanderer." <laughs> and John goes, "I can't tell you." And then fucking Janice just goes all over Europe. And then where did they get captured? Europe. I feel Insane. responsible. I think the CIA yeah. was yeah. listening. Oh, they were. They totally were. The CIA, if you're listening to this podcast, hey. And we know you are, by the way. Well, of course they would. We're covering a Kirk Cameron movie. And that's right. everyone knows <laughs> that so the CIA it. is in Kirk Cameron's pocket. You know? that's, that's Kirk Cameron correct. is their handsomest and stupidest agent. <laughs> I pitched the idea of you coming on and talking with us about the film Fireproof, the uh, movie that really started a lot in terms of like the evangelical Christian micro budget genre. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. This is a film starring Kirk Cameron as a firefighter who is uh, facing the twin battles of fire and pornos. Yeah, and real, real giant battles. You could say that he's facing those giants. You perhaps. could say that. You could say that. Oh. I forgot to mention, like most of our advice comes from the book "Fireproof Your Marriage." It's kind of our <laughs> operating document for the of program. Of course, we do a cool combination of we're left wing, we're LGBT, but we're also evangelical. Right. We're also right. yeah. confessed <laughs> members of the Southern Baptist Convention. <laughs> we we have a little bit of background on sort of what it is and how it got made, right? A little bit, yeah. So this uh, speaking of the Southern Baptist. This comes from a church in Albany, Georgia, a place that allegedly exists. It's somewhere <laughs> basically dead between Macon and Tallahassee. It's in the middle of oh. fucking nowhere. So I looked it, at it on a map it, and I was like, yeah, what? No, it's nowhere. And you can see in a lot of these like exterior sections of this yeah. movie that like this place is fucking hollowed out and empty and, mm-hmm. and yep. beyond its its expiration date. Now it's funny I actually I happen to know a special fact about Albany Georgia because oh, yeah? I Ooh. accidentally listened to the uh, director and producer commentary on this film <laughs> I did it on for purpose. Like the, for like the first 15 <laughs> minutes of the show because uh, I was watching on my phone making lunch 
trying to get ready for the show, right? <laughs> yes, the, 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 the video uh, that I sent you along, the commentary track for some reason showed up as the default audio yeah. when you well, are listening because on because the, the commentary phone, so. is is track one, whereas right. the main audio is track zero. I needed so you it, to know yeah. mm-hmm. uh, that, yeah. may, that Albany, Georgia was at one point the safest city in the United States for fires <laughs> <laughs> just fires everything else it's a lawless hellscape the fires are under control murder running rampant down the streets that's so good 40 years and not a single building burned down <laughs> and then that all changed when we cut down the old willow tree <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's so interesting because you're right there is sort of this this kind of cursed energy about this oh, yeah. movie and about like the exterior shots like I think Kirk Cameron does his best to sort of act the action sequences in a way that makes you think <laughs> there's like large stakes. But because like the background is so static and hollowed out, yeah. it just feels like a man losing his mind while everyone else just kind of stands around. Like it's it's <laughs> deeply uncanny. What's really weird about those scenes where he's going into the fire, too, is that like that's real. Ish. Like he's actually what? going into what? like burning. Like whenever you see fire on screen, it's it's almost never superimposed. There's or a few. Anything. There's is, a few funny his actual control. But but yeah, when he's in that room, it's all yeah. just obviously they put a fog filter right, on it. Right. But like in other parts, like it's real and it couldn't feel less real. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. bizarre to put that much effort and danger into yeah. Kurt Cameron's life to make this. Do so, you know? Do you know how bad an actor you have to be? To make, to make literal fire look bad, obvious <laughs> things like feel fake. Like you have to be so bad at your job. So Brian, <laughs> yeah. Why then, other than obviously its sterling reputation for fire safety? Yeah. Why yeah. was this movie shot in Albany, Georgia? Well, because the church that made it, that's right, a church made this movie, <laughs> is Gasp. in Albany, Georgia. It is a. Uh, the Sherwood Baptist Church. And you probably saw Sherwood pictures at the top of this, as well as also yeah, the, yeah. the Sony imprint for releasing faith based movies that that uh, started up in the mid 2000s. Surprised me a lot yeah. to see Sony on this. Well, and to understand this, to understand like how we got to fireproof, you have to understand where Sherwood Baptist Church mm-hmm. and its movie started. So we have these guys, the Kendrick brothers, and they are both pastors at this church. It's a mega church. It has a weekly attendance mm. uh, of somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 people. So overall membership is far Jesus. larger. Yeah. Uh, this is a uh, this is a big boy. This is a real big well, particularly boy. Particularly when you think boy, about how house. relatively uh, small Albany is, right? Because yeah. Albany, Georgia has a population of about 69,000 people, according to Good Wikipedia. Nice. They made this movie called Flywheel, which also stars one of the Kendrick brothers. Uh, about uh, this. This is actually one I haven't seen. Um, this is so their their first movie is not a big movie, but it is the thing that gets them going. Um, it's a it's a good setup, at least. It's a like a crooked car dealer who then tries to like make good. He's like, oh, I was I was a bad guy for a long time, but then Christ has shown me the error of my ways, and now I have to stop being a boob. So it's like a mm. comedy, I guess. I mean, they 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 can't do comedy. These no. two Kendrick no, brothers. No. no, who do they think they are? The Wayans brothers? Come on. After Flywheel got uh, some selections and some awards at various Christian film festivals. They made a second movie, Facing the Giants, and they had much bigger aspirations for this thing, namely theatrical release so (laughs) they did it baby they did a wide release of facing the giants which is a football movie it's basically just the story of david and goliath but for high school football a a scrappy team of high school football players against a team of giants Mm. (laughs) they're They're all killed killed. they're all (laughs) stepped on and killed immediately it's a it's a movie about how the nephilim are actually real you know it's ahead Uh of its time Uh uh and martyrdom takes you straight to heaven Mm -hmm. so facing the giants was way more successful than they could have expected because they were able to to um, play with controversy. So oh. I was I was looking for it's so hard to find old news clips, even though, you know, they're on YouTube like they just don't show up when you search for them. But I was trying to find stuff from around the time that Facing the Giants came out, because the big thing was the big thing that they were very upset about that they got persecuted about was they got a PG rating. Mm. 
instead of a G oh. rating. Oh, <laughs> how how did they did get that. it? What what was what was well, the, the MPAA said? I believe the phrase is some thematic elements. I uh, I, I hate it when elements are thematic. Yeah, they pray in the movie, oh. and so they're like, it's because okay. of this prayer that happens. That that the movie got PG and they did the whole like right wing media cycle. I remember experiencing this for the first time uh, because I watched a lot of that TV at that point in time, oh, specifically okay. Glenn Beck. Mm. Oh, remember, oh, shit. Folks, I need you to understand you were Glenn for a Beckhead? second that I d- loves it, chalkboards. You know, I was still in high school. I was living at home with my parents. I did not watch Glenn Beck because my parents watched Glenn Beck. Mm, mm. I watched Glenn Beck. <laughs> oh, you came Me. upon him organically. <laughs> my parents didn't watch him. You were just I would, you, it was like after Dragon Ball Z, I'd just flip <laughs> over to Glenn Beck. This guy this guy understands my teenage age. <laughs> I kind of get that because when I was very young, I encountered Rush. Limbaugh on the radio mm-hmm. and I remember my my mother was flipping through radio stations mm-hmm. and we hit Rush Limbaugh and I was like who's this fucking guy he's he's really charismatic and kind of mm-hmm. talks like you know talks real fast and fucking says a lot of wild shit what's this yeah. shit I was like nine and she was like we are not listening to Rush Limbaugh <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way uh, good on your mom so uh, and for people to understand yeah this was before Fox News this was before the chalkboard this mm, was when he yeah. was still on CNN's headline news or HLN oh yeah I remember. oh yeah he started there well I mean he started on radio before that but like that was his big way in before he did Fox Do, is that why you have all of those chalkboards in your apartment that you just keep writing <laughs> yeah. out yeah, just they, they the just ABCs all say of George podcasting. Soros <laughs> on everything. <Yeah. laughs> Muslim Brotherhood, Muammar Gaddafi, Hillary Clinton, George Soros, all that good stuff. Um, so the Kendrick brothers went on Glenn Beck's show and were like, yeah, okay. we got a PG because, uh, you know, because the MPAA is too woke. The, uh, it's worth noting the MPAA actually has clergy members like on its yeah. Yeah, staff. Actively, yeah. Uh, if anyone's ever seen this film is not yet rated. So anyway, the this movie comes out. It's I would say from my memory of it, and I do remember seeing it through like the church distribution thing. I saw it at church. Uh, mm. It's probably a little bit better than Fireproof. There's something a little bit more charming about how kind of naive it is and sure. ha- how scrappy it feels that you lose that the moment that you get Kirk Cameron on the screen right. rather than a bunch of amateurs in Albany, Georgia. And there right. are a lot of amateurs in this movie, to be yeah. clear. Hot uh, single amateurs in your area. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, no, 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 <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate it when a, a very small JPEG of a woman just staring dead into the camera just <laughs> pops up on my screen and says, click here. So facing the giants has a budget of roughly one hundred thousand dollars. To some degree, that's just an amount of money that you write down because most of the people working on this are volunteers. Right. This is not a yeah. uh, union production. Yeah, um, it's 1,200 volunteers, right? You know, there's, the, uh, their food is donated. There's all this other stuff that, that you know, and it, it's going through shit. church books. So they're not being honest with anything. That no, of course. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. So <laughs> Facing the Giants ends up grossing off of that $100,000 budget, give or take, $10 million. Fuck, it's pretty right? good money. That's, That's paper. extremely good money for something coming out of a mega church. But like you can tell the movie itself is not really courting this culture war kind of stuff. And so Fireproof comes along and even it kind of avoids the usual stuff that we've seen in our evangelical media like Left Behind and and Frank Peretti's works and all of that. Yeah, this um, is not God's not dead. They're not no. they're not this movie is not setting out to own the libs. This movie is setting out to own pornography. Yes. And yes. Yes. It kind yes. of <laughs> is to own the libs, which is how you get people to see the movie, but mm-hmm. it's not necessarily in the movie itself. Right. Mm-hmm. And so Fireproof has about five times the budget. I'm sure a good portion of that was just Kirk Cameron money. You have to pay for his wife to get that wig so he can kiss her at the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on its Opening weekend, Fireproof makes six million dollars. Jeez Louise. Overall gross for its theatrical run alone. This is not the stuff that goes to churches. This is not the DVD sales. This is not uh, the book sales and the Sunday school curricula that they sell along with this. 
No. Just the box office from the movie theaters for the run of this movie is $33 million. Wow. It becomes the yeah. top grossing independent film of 2008. That's, yeah. that's so depressing. This podcast shit. God damn yeah. it. Yeah. Not yeah. A yeah. Make it evangelical films. Oh my God. Get the van. We're going to Albany. <laughs> one, one recommendation if you're going to make an evangelical friend from friends of mine who did this mm. in Grand Rapids. Don't hire Gary Busey to be in your evangelical movie. Oh, that will cause wow. your budget to get overrun, and then you're going to have to ask Betsy DeVos for more money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just a piece of advice for the rest of you out there. But yeah. it, it really, I, I remember sort of the cultural moment of Fireproof, because yeah. even though at that point I was personally pretty well outside of the sphere of, of this of this whole like situation. Three months earlier, John Josh first logged on to Reddit, saw that's, a top post from our atheism, our atheism and that's right, blew right. his mind. <laughs> so, Audrey and Donna, were you already familiar with the Kendrick Brothers, with Fireproof, with any of this before, like, going to record this podcast? I knew about Kirk Cameron and the banana is what I, yes. I knew about. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Way of the master. That's, that's, that's his had. ministry. That's all yeah. the background. Okay. <laughs> I knew I was going to get the real shit. I had no familiarity with this. I knew of the guy uh, in like the left behind stuff. Uh -huh. and, like at the time that this movie came out, what, 2008, I, so I was raised Catholic, and I was like, "Hey, hey, hey. Was <laughs> Catholic. yeah, yeah, let's, let's hear it for the Pope." Whoa, <laughs> we love <laughs> you, Christine. <laughs> oh, the intercession tape. of the saints. More red tape. <laughs> it's a me. Light candles. <laughs> Fucking uh, occasional burning of incense. <laughs> Somebody release me from my prison under the catacombs. I've taken all of my milk. I don't even know I'm going to talk anymore now that Charles Martinet is no longer available. <laughs> That is true. Oh, oh, it's just going to be Chris Pratt. Well, what's weird about his Mario, I finally watched the Mario movie, and yeah. what's weird about his Mario is that every once in a while, it gets a little offensive, but then it like, backs <laughs> away very, very slowly. Offensive? Like, he's, doing like, he's doing like a Brooklyn Jewish accent, specifically. <laughs> no, no, but literally, he's jumping over blocks in one of the clips, and he says, um, <laughs> oh, the blocks are so high up, oh no. And you're like, I don't think you should, I don't think you're allowed to do that, Chris. <laughs> These gombas. <laughs> <laughs> I stuck a wiggle in my ass. <laughs> I kept this, kept this wiggle up my ass for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> But like full on, like I went to youth group and shit. Like I was done. I was doing big time, big time Catholic stuff uh, until I was 15, and then I got a girlfriend, and I was like, wait, what? What if I had sex? That would wait. Be, your girlfriend drove you away from the Lord. She did. She was Norwegian oh. and an atheist. And uh, pulled me out of God's arms. C Catholicism shit seems pretty separate from evangelical yeah. Yeah. type yeah. stuff like this. Because we definitely, I'm trying to, I can't like pull anything. I mean, we definitely like watched some Christian stuff like in these youth group things and like in church groups. But this kind of stuff was just somehow completely like out of my field of view. I mean, I watched Veggie Tales. Were you were you a Veggie Tales? Yeah. yeah. So I watched okay. that. It, it, it's weird that like some stuff overlaps and it feels like it's more like kids stuff. Maybe yeah. Yeah. it would overlap yeah, yeah, yeah. between the two. Movies like this that are for adults ostensibly and, and done by evangelicals like that just didn't feel like it had crossover. And I, I yeah. left the church probably around the time that this came out. So okay. maybe I don't know. Maybe some Catholics are out there like, no, this was this was my favorite flick back in my <laughs> in my Catholic days. They had the Passion of the Christ, though. Ooh, okay, yeah, we we were very into that. Okay, we yeah, were very into that. That, well, that's and, your and one. You get the, one. The passion is why all of this happened. Yeah, it is the whole reason yeah. that all of these churches start producing movies and that we find different distribution networks. Why Sony has this imprint just for faith based films? It's because of the massive success of Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. Yeah. Christians got money. If if there's a market out there and you can target it effectively, you can earn those dollars, you know? Yeah. yeah and right. ultimately, if there's an opportunity to make money, the studios are not going to turn down that opportunity, even if it means distributing a dog shit fucking <laughs> film like this. <laughs> and I mean, nobody makes more money for these Christian independent movies, quite like the first and only winner of the Try Not to Come Challenge, Kirk Cameron. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> 
fucking guy. <laughs> he, it's like he's he's frozen in amber, right? Mm-hmm. You watch his performance in this movie, and it's like he just never aged out of growing pains, right? right. He never had the titular growing pains, and just mm. be, stayed mm. stuck mm. as mm. this seventeen-year-old jealous little shit. Yeah, who just couldn't get motherfucker. over Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> it's yeah. really it's really strange because the the way that this movie kicks off actually is is with a little bit of Kirk Cameron. He's basically dressing down another firefighter because it, we, we get the, the opening titles, which is, again, we talked about that. We have this weird little thing where um, th- there's like a little girl who's getting told a story. <laughs> and yeah. she's like, I want to marry daddy. And it's like, no, Catherine, yeah, you can't was, marry daddy. Donna, you were yeah, texting me during this. <laughs> <laughs> that was upsetting. Yeah, yeah I didn't enjoy that. With this film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I enjoy that. <laughs> No, it's a framing device that then never gets. It doesn't go ended. anywhere. I, I no, thought it's, it w- it's just so you know that that you know she was that little girl, right? Right, that little and her girl dad was a firefighter. And, and oh, I thought that was their kid. I thought yeah, it was, that's yeah, what yeah. it seems like. Well, like it it there, is, yeah. there is a there's a little lower third text that says 25 years ago that you're totally forgiven for not noticing. <laughs> yes, because I didn't notice it either. Actually, it's very strange. But ultimately, yeah. yes, w- what we come away from this bizarre like one minute thing with the understanding of is that there is a girl somewhere who wanted a firefighter who could love her like her daddy. And Ugh. after the <laughs> opening titles, <laughs> look, I'm not, s- <laughs> don't look at me like that. I'm not any happier about this than you are. I just have to this film it. is anti-porn. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> come on. I, so, love me like daddy. So, yeah, this whole opening, like with this stuff and with the jump to 25 years into the future, just the fucking Christian movie dolly shots yep. of static things. Things, pictures, yep. objects on a shelf, fire stations, roads. Um, yeah, these these are the least <laughs> dynamic opening titles I have ever there seen. There is a part yeah. in the commentary, Audrey, you may have heard this, where they're introducing the fire station as they have this moving shot. Yep. exterior shot of the fire station nothing is happening yet and there's a flag waving and they're talking about how when they lined that shot up everyone was crying on yeah. set <laughs> and the wind and the way the camera just took it in was perfect they said on the there were people That's weeping awesome. as they looked at a flag <laughs> yep Yep, and and, and and here's the thing: the titles are written in the West Wing. I, yeah, Trajan, baby, I noticed that. Thrill, man, my bad. Man. This ain't no gang. You playing with people's lives? <laughs> Come on, man. Eric, he's got a right to be upset with you. You left him in a dangerous spot and tried to be a hero. The captain. I, I thought I heard someone calling for help. It was coming from outside the building. But it was so dark, oh. I, mean, I couldn't see anything. That's why you stay with your partner. He had no choice but to assume that something happened to you and you needed his help. You never leave your partner, especially <gasps> in a fire. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Foreshadowing. So that is Kirk Cameron. Uh, he plays the character Caleb. He is the chief of this fire department here in Albany, Georgia. And as you can hear from that interaction, which is, by the way, so fucking confusing at the beginning yeah. because it's like, yeah. who are these people? Real, man, my bad, man. This ain't no gang. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't even, like, he's interrupting the first line of dialogue, which you cannot make out at all. No, it's just like, no. I remember, like, ain't no <laughs> gang. <laughs> but what we are expected to take away from this is that Caleb has authority. You know, he, he has a lot of positive qualities that make him a natural leader. Right. And so here, here's my question for for the room. Uh, what do we think of Caleb at the beginning of this movie? I think he's cool and sexy. <laughs> I want to marry him. <laughs> Does he remind you of your, of your dad, basically? I want him to love me like yeah. daddy. Yes, yeah. I want that. Uh, earlier in the commentary, they were like, they really foreshadow the pornography during the commentary mm-hmm. in the very early part of the film. And mm-hmm. they talk about how there is an anger behind lust right Mm. so that if you lust something it will cause you great anger and so he might they might have that might have been like a directorial choice they might have been like you gotta play this like you're about to fucking blow sure i mean no this is deliberate like they do want him to because like the the argument that we will eventually find is just a full like screaming match 
He's constantly hitting things and breaking things. Yeah. So they, they really think that they're on to something with this. And they're not. But <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> but it is important to know that, yes, Caleb loves jacking off to pop ups. Yes. He's, he's yeah. a big like, uh, oh, you know, he's yeah. the kind of guy who steals the Sears catalog and puts it in the closet for later. You know, he's got problems when, whenever a jogger walks by, he has to avert his <laughs> eyes. Uh, that's a reference to our every young man's battle episode, which pairs yeah. very nicely with this one. Well, because every young man's the difference, of course, is that every young man's battle, the movie is supposed to just sell you every young man's battle, the book. Whereas mm-hmm. Fireproof is a movie that exists on its own. It's not there to sell you a book. <laughs> hmm. you sure about that one, Brian? Hmm. <laughs> well, okay, no, I'm looking, and it's true. Yes, oh, it is oh. not there to sell you a book. It's oh, there okay. to sell you three to five books? <laughs> a whole reading list. <laughs> Just keep that in the back of your mind, folks. Part of the reason that this movie is so weird is that a lot of different hands were in it in a lot of different parts of the creative process, and so there are different deliverables it needs to hit. Well, they're not even necessarily different hands, because the main book is written by the same two guys. Okay, well, maybe they just have really weird hands. Then. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Kirk's into. The character of Caleb, as we've said, really he's just defined by what we are supposed to think of him, which is, yeah. again, loyal, courageous, you know, hardworking, diligent, and what we actually perceive, which is just this constant, pulsating, terrifying anger. Yeah. And yeah. this contrast... Yeah, he's supposed to be relatable here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, a little, maybe a little rough around the edges, but but relatable most. Mm-hmm. And this contrasts pretty strongly with his fucking bitch wife, who we end up uh, seeing at her job at the hospital. Yeah, she yeah. she she works at the hospital, not in a medical role. She's uh, they, they, it's weirdly detailed for someone that they don't spend any time with. Um, mm-hmm. She does PR right for the hospital. There could right. not be a less likable position. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do PR for a hospital. Oh, OK, so you make sure that the medical industry looks mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. This fucking luck. This is obviously like a big hospital system. Mm-hmm. She makes a lot of money doing this job. And yet she's just constantly walking around in like the ward. Yeah, just <laughs> like, talking, to, talking, the talking nurses. to the nurses. Most of her job seems to consist of talking to the nurses. Um, Why wouldn't they just make her a nurse? Why is she doing PR? (laughs) Well, I think it's to show that she is in much the same way as uh, Caleb. Like, she's a career woman, right? In some ways, her class positioning is actually higher than her husband. Like, it's implied that she might be making more money. I think it's also important to show here that uh, her work does does not have the high stakes that his does. If she was a nurse, Mm. it would, right? There are lives on the Uh, line. There's stress. Mm. There's death. Um, And no, no, no. She's got her cushy little office job. Where she gets to make eyes at the hottest, tallest doctor <laughs> who has the ever walked the earth. The gumpiest doctor that has ever walked the earth. Hey, Dr. Also, Gavin is a fucking smoke show, and I will hear <laughs> nothing else. Also, she gets to wear cuter fits if she's a PR flag. Yeah. True. As true. As true. That's true. True. She gets to wear the pantsuit, which is a big mm-hmm. red flag mm-hmm. in these movies. Absolutely. Uh, I thought he looked like the, the DJ Armin Van Buren, the like original Dutch oh, trans no, DJ. Yeah, 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 if you, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you slap Armin around with the ugly stick a couple times, <laughs> yeah, he looks like Armin Van Buren a little bit. Yeah. I got a kick out of the reveal of him, though, because I read the plot summary of this first, because again, oh. I had it, and I was like, what is the deal yeah. with this movie? Oh, yeah. she, she, there's going to be like this hunky doctor that she's talking to. And then he shows up on screen for the first time. I was like, no way. <laughs> no, no way. No way. No way. way. No way man. <laughs> and this, the woman that they have playing the wife is a very attractive woman, but they have just done her so dirty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she is like, oh, yeah. she is 25 in this film. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and they have, the, what has been done to her hair alone is, yeah. is illegal in 43 states. She's like Berenstain Bear's mother 25 is what she is in this fucking film. <laughs> Uh, she is played by somebody named Aaron Bethea, uh, who mm-hmm. is not related, not to the best of my knowledge, to our f- good friend Nate, <laughs> the co-host of What a Hell of a Way to Die and uh, Trash Future. And I wanted to, to point this up here. She is a Nepo baby. Uh, her what? dad 
is the pastor of the church that yeah. produced this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, honey, well, here's you the good thing. Movie? <laughs> you won't have to kiss Kirk Cameron. That's, no. You sure won't. You sure won't. You so that's one me. silver lining. You know, she's very stressed out all of the time, but the mm-hmm. movie is sort of putting the hand on the scale a little bit to be like, well, her stress isn't as real as the stress that, you know, uh, that that her husband is experiencing. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's important to note about her that we hadn't mentioned yet is that she has a senile mother, which is uh, surprisingly not paid off. I was so looking forward oh, to the scene man. where she has a brief like moment of clarity. Her mother and snaps out of the dimension. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, like in God's not like dead, God's but not it dead. never happened. Well, it's like they whenever they sat down and wrote the second and final draft of this movie, they were like, yeah. oh, <laughs> we gave the wife nothing to do. Let's put some stuff in. And then they, they worked it into the first three scenes mm-hmm. and then they got really tired and they had to yeah. go get some Chick-fil-A. And then they decided right. that, that it was perfect. Like, yeah, they didn't need th- there's, to keep writing. Well, what's really interesting about this first scene, too, is that they talk about how fucked up the healthcare system is and how she can't afford to, like, help her mom. But instead of, like, interrogating that in any particularly interesting way, they're just like, Oh, well, what are you going to do? And they just kind of leave. But this is also a strange... PR for that same industry is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I guess. This this is also very strange, just as a... I'm going to really critique the realisticness of this narrative now, because God help me. If she is in this, like top tier PR positioning she is because of the state of modern medicine as an administrator at that oh, level incredibly good she's going to be making more than the doctors like yeah. right. oh sure yeah and, and since her house you know regardless of how big and nice it may be is in Albany Georgia right, right. that mortgage got paid <laughs> off after three months right like let's not kid ourselves here you know when I look at that house mm. I'm like I want to live there yeah, beautiful yeah. house I, beautiful I house. Wanna, I want to live in a house filled with mannequins. If, if you if you want to live, if you want to live in that house, AJ, mm. all you need to do is become a missionary and then be on furlough for a little while. It looks a like missionary it was cons- house. It looks like it was truly. It looks like it was constructed in uh, conservatively like a month. Like yeah. it's yeah. just like they threw bricks down and were just like called it a day. It's, yeah, it was like it's part just- of the building project for the church itself because the church owns that house. Yeah, right. Right. Oh, I see. That's why it's a little. I'm not too joking big. about the missionary furlough thing. That is a house for missionaries yeah. on furlough. That, that the actually makes owns. a lot of yeah. sense. Oh that even God. explains the very strange interior, like decoration yeah. choices yeah. with the couches and shit. Floor. My, yeah. my house growing up was a house that was built by a church mm. uh, for like a, a pastor or mission, something like that. And it, you can tell it was one of yeah. the weirdest places you could have ever stepped foot in. Just very strange <laughs> architectural features all throughout. Now we have our lead protagonist caleb as well as what is ultimately the lead antagonist honestly catherine the yeah, wife friggin wife yeah tell me Ugh. about it <laughs> there's a secret antagonist and that is milfs that's true <laughs> <laughs> in your area, in your area specifically. <laughs> <laughs> we both reached for it. So as we had <laughs> mentioned, good. Catherine has this doctor that she sort of has a, an attraction to. There's also these nurses who she talks to regularly at the nurses station, and they observe what is going on between them. If I didn't know any better, I'd say the doctor has a thing for cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So this is like you had these people and this is how you chose to use them. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's pointing right back to just how rotten this whole fucking enterprise is in many ways, yeah. because it, on some level, like it's it's laughable and it's cartoonishness, but it's also like fucking gross. I I, I don't like yeah. it. Yeah, no one yeah, gets it's paid. labor exploitation. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no one has gotten paid. And this movie has made tens of millions of dollars at right. least. After Catherine leaves to go home, she meets Caleb there and immediately they start fighting. Did I offend you by walking in the door this morning? No, you just can't expect me to work every day. He's wearing a shirt that just came straight out of the bag. You You chose to take this job and no one said you had to work full time. We need the income, especially since you took away a third of your salary saving for a boat we don't need. You've got $24,000 in savings, but we have things in our house that need fixing. Like what? The back door needs to be painted, the yard needs better landscaping, and I keep telling you I want to put more shelves in the closet. Those are called preferences, Catherine. Those are not needs. There's a difference. If you want to spend your money on that stuff, go ahead, fine. But I've been saving up for my boat for years. You're not taking that from me. Kirk Cameron wants to fuck a boat. 
And <laughs> there's nothing you can say that can convince me otherwise. Because here's the thing. Usually I go into these movies and I'm like, okay, I'm looking like for a fun bit, you know, like to sort of like, you know, right. spice things up. Like, you know, an outrageous comment here or there. He literally looks at boat porn yeah. <laughs> halfway through this film. Mm. And they seed it here in this very interesting way because you are supposed to be on his side about this. But then when I went and read the supplemental materials to this, <laughs> the other books that you are encouraged to read at the end of the movie, mm. um, they describe the character in this moment as being overly driven by materialism and greed. We're not hmm. really supposed to see this as a good thing. We're supposed to see this as a situation of, well, he doesn't quite have his priorities in order. But I don't think right. that comes across. It felt like he was supposed to be I, like identified with for sure to me. Yeah. And it's weird that like I wrote down, here are the characteristics of this man. He's angry. He wants a boat and he wants to crank hog. And that's yeah. basically yeah, yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> and that's it's wild to be like. Because you're you're this Christian organization making this, you're ostensibly trying to speak to people in the church who like need to get it together, and their issues are that they're pissed and jerking it all of the time. Like, are you supposed to, as the viewer, be like, I am really angry and I want to jerk mm. off all the time, and maybe I can take something away from this? Like, are there so many people in the church who are like that? And like as a young Catholic teenager, like a little bit for me, I was like a fucking angry teenager. I yeah. was I was cranking it with the best of them back then. <laughs> I mean, it's just wild to like, yeah, I, I didn't have the boat aspirations yet. <laughs> yeah, it was wild to be like, yeah, yeah, that's why we need a show. That's right. after confirmation. So we can get that Donovan you... their boat. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, your saint name that you take for confirmation is actually your boat name. That's what you have to name your boat. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is kind of wild that, it, that like that level of anger is so normalized as like this relatable thing. Yeah, you're going to yeah. like push your wife against the wall and yell in her face. I'm like, yeah, we've all been there. We got to work a little harder on that. And it's like, that's fucked. Yeah, that's it's, really crazy. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it, that, he keeps doing this thing with his hands. <laughs> yeah. like, he'll be he'll be talking to somebody and he'll get angry and he'll like bring his fists up yeah. to like yeah. either side yes. of their face. Yes. In a way that if someone did to me, I would hit him. We next see uh, Caleb at the gym. He's lifting with his buddy, Michael. <sighs> Michael, by the way, <laughs> is uh, portrayed by a man named Ken Bevel who is uh -huh. the senior associate pastor at Sherwood Baptist Church. Uh, so there you so, go. Uh, there you go. That's once again. Chance. It ain't working, Michael. How is it that I get respect everywhere I go except in my own house? I've been there. That's a hard place to be. What'd you do about it? I realized that it wasn't my marriage that was broken. I just didn't know how to make it work. What does that mean? That treadmill's not broken, but if you don't know how to run it, it ain't gonna work for you. You saying I need counseling? Well, I think everybody needs counseling. Hey, look, man, I am not about to go talk to somebody I don't even know about something that's none of their business. All right. Catherine does need to respect you. But just remember, a woman's like a rose. If you treat her right, she'll bloom. Mm. If you don't, she will. Mm. Where'd you get that? Counseling. <laughs> We're also a riddle to be solved. Yeah. yeah. This movie yeah, really this, thinks it's lo it loves women. Which is also something that is reflected in Fireproof Your Life, uh, which, again, is the book that was written by Michael Catt, the, the senior pastor at this church. It's mm. all about like, oh, men be doing this and women be shopping. And it, it's it's I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to hear from you, Donna and Audrey, because, you know, you you've been talking about relationships for some time now and i imagine that you often or at least sometimes hear from people who have this like super gendered expectation about things yeah how do you find that to be compared to this and just like what do you do with this basically when you hear it we it's eschew wild. it we eschew it for the most part yeah. we tend to just be yeah. like gender essentialism is thoroughly horse shit it, and it people sucks. just do what they do and it's like there are expectations put on people by society and you fulfill those roles to whatever degree that you decide you want to fulfill them but other than that 
there is no way to say women feel this way about right, this right. or women want this or men want this mm-hmm. other thing. It's wild because, okay, again, growing up in the Catholic Church and just generally in like heteronormative American culture, mm-hmm. uh, so much of like the advice that you hear when you're younger is like, or, or just general sense of women is like, no, nobody understands women. It's like mm-hmm. the biggest mystery in the world, man. But oh, if you can figure that out, like, ah, oh, that'd be, you'd be the smartest person in the world or whatever. <laughs> like, it's very much this there's two categories of things and you have to approach them differently. And yeah. the church, like, really, really pushes that stuff. Yes. I, oh, uh, yeah. I got a horrible dose of this once. I went to a Seventh day Adventist wedding oh, boy. with an ex of mine because her oh. extended family is like that. <laughs> And to hear the fucking the vows and the sermon about how a man needs respect in these things and a woman needs this, this and this thing. It was like it was chilling Mm -hmm. to be in the room full of people and everybody's like, yeah, this is like inspiring, great stuff. And I was over there like this is horrifying that this still not only exists, but is like a, a huge fundamental thing. For like a good portion of the country, like a a lot of people in different Christian faiths are like this. And so as Audrey's saying, like we obviously as a couple of uh, of fucking queer people don't subscribe to this at all. And we didn't even at the beginning of the show when we were ostensibly cis men. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So we our our approach is I don't think we ever are like, well, what are the genders here? It's always like. What are you looking for? What does your partner need? And communicate that to each other and figure out how you make that work. It's how do you arrive at the center and do the relationship right? right. Yeah, it's never you're the husband. And so you got to do this and you're the wife. So you got to do this. It's just what do you need? It's another person. What do you need as people? And how do you reconcile that to, to support each other and get your needs met? And the, the central theses of this discussion of marriage and how it works is that one men need to talk to men and women need to talk to women because they can't understand across the way, even though you also women should never talk to women because they're all horrible in this movie. Um, (laughs) The other thing is that when it, when you finally boil it down, you find out what the specific thing is that men understand that women don't, that women understand that men don't. It's that men need respect and women mm-hmm. need love. And that was some, literally and, the sermon in this wedding. Was like, like, <laughs> this that, is an old, exact old message. drum to be beat mm-hmm. here. And this is what the Kendrick brothers say in their commentary when they're not just yes. narrating the movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that centrality is that like women don't understand what respect is and men don't understand what love is. But what, also what like, emotions are even. Yeah. Like, right, right, but right. also like this is a movie and a book. And another book and another book (laughs) that are all written by men exclusively. Mm -hmm. Yes. No women in the creative decisions at all in any of this. There's there's something so interesting about the way that people like this, the people who wrote this movie, universalize their own experience. Right. Where they they they, you'll you'll get things that are like, yeah, as as you're saying, like, oh, women, you know, nobody can understand them. They're their life's greatest mystery, just a riddle waiting to be solved. And it's like. It, and, and this is how all men think. But then it's like, no, mate, it's kind of like, this is you, dude. And, and <laughs> right. yeah, it's trying to universalize like very specific kinks, like fucking a boat, for example. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we all want to, right? I mean, it's touched the great abyss of the sea. It knows things we <laughs> could never things. know. And we can absorb that into ourselves yeah. if only we could penetrate mm. its stern hull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but ultimately. Hilariously. Oh, okay. Oh, no, ahead. you got it. I was going to say hilariously, uh, part of uh, my transgender uh, experience was universalizing the idea that everyone wants to be a girl, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everyone wants that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, I read Danny in the Deep Blue Sea. I know what this is about. It's yeah. for your theater heads out there. <laughs> it's, I, I didn't actually know where the movie ended up, but like, w- what do these people think about counseling? For relationships, oh, are they pro counseling? Because these are all it pastors, and that's okay. who you go. You know, yeah, it's not going to therapy; it's exactly. going to counseling, right. which is done yes. at church. I see. Okay, my head was sort of equating the two, mm-hmm. like like lumping them together. Yeah, yeah, but they don't do it. No, like, that's the, that's <laughs> no. another central thesis of this movie. Is like you should go to counseling. Counseling is a good thing. Also, here's how you solve your marriage by yourself with your mom's <laughs> journal. Spoilers! <laughs> Spoilers, Brian. <laughs> 
It's your mother's sex diary. She, <laughs> she wrote out all of the positions and the durations. Yeah, th okay. those weren't chapter and verses. Those were those were listings of the this orgasms. This is called the cure hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's what got me interested in boats in the first place. The thing about Michael that we take away is that he's the wise. He's just so wise, right? He he, he has great wisdom in him. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. The kind of wisdom that can only be passed in this kind of movie from a black man from onto a, a white a, a to the white protagonist. loving <laughs> <Yes>. African-American <sighs> man yep. who's got lots of jokes. Yep. Who's got lots of uh, lots of ways to let you know that you're in, that you're cool. Lots of sharp this, witticisms. This movie is I have black friends. I swear the movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. My favorite scene is when Kurt Cameron gets the pass. Oh, we'll yes. get there. We will get yeah. there. Oh, the boy. <laughs> it's like when AJ so, got the pass at the beginning of this episode. Uh, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. Please. So Enjoy. after after that stimulating <laughs> gym sesh, Caleb comes home to his wife and it's round two, baby. You have no idea what I go through. Oh, yeah. But what do you do around here other than watch TV and waste time on the Internet? You know what? If looking at that trash is how you get fulfilled. That's fine. But I will not compete with it. Well, I sure don't She's get it right. from you. It, Twitter really fell apart when Elon took and over. And you won't, <laughs> because you care more about saving for your stupid boat and pleasing yourself than you ever did about me. At Shut the up. same time. Oh, I'm sick of you! You disrespectful, ungrateful, selfish woman! I'm not How selfish. dare you say that to me! You constantly nag me and you drain the life out of me! I'm tired of it! If you can't give me the respect I deserve, look at me! Then what's the point of this marriage? Yeah, this part was terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Genuinely really difficult to hear again, actually. I, I just want out. If you want out, that's fine with me! <laughs> No, th this movie thinks that that th they're they're doing George and Martha and who's afraid of Virginia Woolf. These are right. two two people who are in a real bad situation who are both lashing out at each other. But no, this is just a situation where a woman has a bad husband. This guy yeah, right. sucks shit and she needs to leave him. And that would be yeah. our advice on the show, too. Like yeah. the fact that yeah. this characterizes like this is something you both got to get with God and, and work through. It's like, no, get out of there. <laughs> mm -hmm. This dude is going to hurt you physically yeah. if he hasn't already. Yeah. I 25 F got yelled at by my husband, 28M, <laughs> yeah, yeah. over basically nothing. Over yeah, he boat. screamed in my face and then beat up a trash can. Yeah, and they try and introduce comedy here too, right? When he beats up the trash can after like to yeah. vent out his anger, there's just this like, old wizened neighbor who I thought briefly was God. And, uh, <laughs> that would be a much better device. It would have been. And he just says, Mr. Rudolph? And he says, Caleb. And this is a joke that they'll come back to uh -huh. yeah. four times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, the classic rule of fours. <laughs> we love it. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is such an awful scene. And then they try and pivot away from this again with that Mr. Rudolph thing. But now we got to get some shenanigans. We do. We got we, we got to we got to get to that fire shenanigans at the firehouse. Um, this doesn't really bear talking about too much other than to say that every time we go to the firehouse, it is shot like a gay porno. This movie the is, lighting and everything. is two yeah. hours long. Yes. Two yes. Full and you hours feel it. long you feel it. because they decide that they want this to be a movie about a failing marriage, but they also want it to be a movie about how much research they did on what being a fireman is like. So mm -hmm. they throw yeah. in everything, all the little pranks that people play on each other at the fire station, the actual procedure for how you go out to a call. We see multiple calls. We don't start with a call. We start with just post call. They should have started with a call. Right, right, which was where right. the guy yeah. would have made his mistake and done all that stuff. But this is like half the movie because this is where they do the comedy. Also, because I think there must have been something weird with Kirk Cameron's schedule, maybe because mm. we don't see him and his wife together for like the rest of the picture. No, he's too busy looking at a giant magazine of boats. They have decided <laughs> out in the pu out in public. They have decided <laughs> to pace this movie or, or, or build this movie's uh, conflict around a marriage that has already failed. But yeah, you have yes. to understand yeah. the problem with divorce in the case of this movie is that it simply cannot happen. 
Right. Marriage yep. must continue. Right. It must always get marriage on its own in the in the total abstract nature of what it is must be protected and must not be. You must not allow yourself to re, to to leave a marriage or to let someone else leave you. The the metaphor that they're using here, again, they're very on the nose about it in the firehouse um, and it's not good. It sucks. But one thing that we do get here that's kind of interesting from like a plot perspective and a what are these writers thinking perspective mm. is that Kirk Cameron talks to his fellow firefighters about like what he thinks his wife is doing. And then it cross cuts to his wife doing those things. And she's mostly just bitching about him, which, again, further goes to yeah. demonstrate what this movie thinks Th- about. Women. This is the last right. scene where they tried to focus on her at all. And they're like, mm-hmm. we don't know what we're doing. But but it's also the most ambitious scene that they do yeah. in terms of like technique mm-hmm. and storytelling. And it's 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 not something you've uh, it's not novel, uh, but they're just cross cutting between the two conversations where yeah. each one is describing sort of their side. The the comments are dovetailing and overlapping. And But what we do get after this was one of my favorite small and extremely bizarre scenes. This is setting up one of the calls that the firehouse is going to get. And this scene does not need to be no. here, <laughs> but uh, we should play it. Basically, just picture in your mind right now that in front of the frame closest to the camera, you've got a couple girls in a car. They're sort of looking out the window at boys who are pulled up alongside them in another car. Bethany. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Ross. What's going on? What are y'all doing? We're heading down to the pizza barn to meet some friends. You want to come? Sure. Hey, we'll race you there. And if you win, we'll buy. Ready, set, go, go, go. Again, by a completely dead, hollowed out, shuttered part of town. Everyone, everyone loves listening to Christian music. Well, yes, oh, you know, whether oh, they're yeah. working out at the fire station, whether they believe in God or not, everyone just can't get enough of some uh, third day, whatever the well, fuck that I, is. Yeah, this, casting crowns. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what this scene does for me is it just really reinforces um, how much they want to use this film as an opportunity to teach Christian values. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And like teach its audience uh, something good. So for all the teens in the audience, all you cool kids out there listening to newsboys cranking that shit as you drive down in the abandoned part yes, of town. Yes, sir, that's me. Don't speed. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're in the exclusion good zone, you gotta stay below the speed limit. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, the biggest problem, yeah, with where they are in town is that if you're just driving down the road, you don't know. You, you could be running into stalkers. You know, you could be running into right. all of the other anomalies right. that occur within the zone. You always need to mm-hmm, keep like mm-hmm. a nut and some rags on you that you can throw Absolutely. ahead of you in order to keep <laughs> yeah. natural phenomena and, and unnatural phenomena from taking over. Uh, but Super to be mutants. fair, they do put the car in Tarkovsky. So, uh, <laughs> AJ, can you really unpack that one for me real quick? Yeah, sure. OK, okay. so uh, go, go with me here. OK, yeah. yeah. So. The word Tarkovsky, sure. yes, the name Tarkovsky, sure, contains the syllable car. Right? No, I got, I got that. Can no, you explain? No, no, the... actually, I don't got that. That does not <laughs> occur in that name. You've got yeah. tar mm-hmm. and kov. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You got him there. Here's, a, here's another one. Here's, here's another one there. for you, AJ. Thank you. This has been great. I've, I've loved being yeah. host of this podcast. Here's here's a, I, have to, I have to go die of embarrassment now. Here's, here's, well. a, here's another one, AJ. Here's another one for you. Mm. I, I didn't say I didn't say all the syllables that were in there. Mm. It also has the, this syllable, ski. Mm. Now, between the three of those, <laughs> which one is car? <laughs> Is it perhaps none of them? <laughs> so the result of this car uh, adventure, these car pranks that these teens are pulling, yeah. is that Dispatch ends up contacting the fire department, right? Because wouldn't you know it, the car pranks have gone awry. Yeah. Uh, mm. One of the car, the, the cars have crashed. One of the cars is trapped on the train tracks. Steering wheel flew right out the window. Uh, right, right out the window. <laughs> Um, and so uh, the fire department has to show up. Kurt Cameron has to go out there to save these girls from this 
car that's trapped on the railroad tracks yep. while a train mm-hmm. bears down on it. It is impossible to overstate how boring this scene. Oh, it's so <laughs> yeah. and they, how again, hard they got a real train to head yes. down those tracks. They they you know they really fucked up a car real bad. It's and, all practical. How yeah. do you fuck it up this bad? It's yeah, the most they, vi- they took out a. I mean, they have a professional as their cinematographer, as their DP is like a guy who has worked on major Hollywood productions, but not in a creative capacity as an mm. operator. And mm. he's got he's got nothing in his right brain, I guess, because like this yeah. is some videography ass production here. I, I had a question about this train crash in particular. Uh-huh. Um, is this a snuff film? Did that man <laughs> lose his ankles to that train? No, no, no. Also, his has, ankles were no, fine. Michael's fine. Michael's fine. Yeah, no, but it looked like when the train it does look like it runs over his his legs or something. But no, it's just just, that he's screaming. Yeah, (laughs) and it hits hits his helmet off. Why is he screaming? He's a firefighter. It doesn't make sense. Well, he's screaming because he's holding up that car because they have to pick up the car and they have to carry it over. It looked right. like the train like took out his ankles, and that's why yeah. I thought yes. it was I got screaming. You. I got you. But, but it's also like no, it's they have inept. to add so much gravitas yes. to yeah. this scene. Like Kirk Cameron's like giving orders, and it's going, and the camera's yeah, like yeah, kind yeah, of like yeah, shaking yeah. Uh-huh. like yeah. in front of him. But like it's very clear well, again, there's actually no urgency in anything yeah. happening around right. him. And yeah. then a fucking veteran just comes yes. up. Yes. 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 There's just yes. one. There's a there is, there is a stolen valor guy walking around with like a U.S. Marines uniform and he's like, it's time for me to help pick up this car with the firemen. And oh. that is uh, one of the Kendrick brothers that is the director That's of this movie. Awesome. Oh, wow. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. He decided to make himself a troop, a heroic troop who That's comes in to awesome. rescue these little girls. You know, oh, firefighters are kind of troops, too. I'm just, I'm just hopping in with my boys. <laughs> I think maybe my favorite thing about this whole exchange is yeah. that uh, they there is a boy, there's a car full of boys mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. flipped or whatever the fuck, yeah. like who knows what happened to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah All we rocked. get is Michael goes over to that car and goes, they're fine. And then kind of <laughs> <laughs> no, no, bad things about. can only happen to women. Exactly. That's, that's yes. what we learn. Exactly. Because, yeah, Michael is, as, as we'll remember, you know, Kirk Cameron's uh, comrade in arms. He's sort of second in command at the fire station. And for him, this is a real fucking like emotional and physical struggle to save these girls. And once he gets to the end of it, you know what he does? Gets down on his knees and he prays. That's he prays. Right. Mm. There is nothing more like visually boring than watching someone pray. Ooh, and they have real. to take like several seconds just to linger on that shot at least in this case there's music underneath wow you know, AJ. there's like a swell of of, of, of like who, who are you happening who but. are you the mp the mp double a yeah do you 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 oppose prayer <laughs> maybe could but be. Yeah, this, this maybe is, this is a way of basically signaling to the audience that like michael is our moral hero right yeah, he's, oh, he's the guy, guy. who gets it and, and this is this is a staple of these movies and yeah. i'm just curious sort of how this struck all of you just in terms of the absolute sort of didacticism of this moment oh it struck me like a train yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wrote down pollyanna ass michael he has mm. no flaws yeah eventually there's a minor one and it's right very, we'll get oh, to oh you it. think it's, it's minor over. you think this flaw is minor <laughs> <laughs> This man spat in the face of God. (laughs) (laughs) He ruined some poor virgin. He did. He did. (laughs) That's what he did. He he, he destroyed her flower as it blossomed. (laughs) Well, okay. I'm going to get a little vulnerable for a second. Sure. Please. I'm just going to get a little vulnerable. I was driving. I was driving my shitty Dodge Grand Caravan back from Ikea to pick up a desk. I had just moved into this part in this Mm. room in this house. And uh something was going wrong with the car and i got stuck in traffic mm-hmm. and i was like i called on i was a jehovah's witness this is a very small child oh wow. okay oh wow. yeah and i called on jehovah i was like come on man can yeah. we just let's make it home <laughs> let's just get home with this desk and we can fix the car later in this week can we please and this was recent and embarrassing you did but the whole joe biden you're like come on man 
Come on, man. And I did. I did Come make on. it home, and I w- I thought of that when I saw him praying that he made it mm, through yeah, the thing yeah. that he mm. made it through, and I kind of went. I understand. Uh, that that yeah. hit you a little. Audrey's bit. a troop a too. I'm well, also a <laughs> troop. <laughs> In the uh, podcast. So wars. you had to right. volunteer and help yourself in full uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. So you did. Um, I don't want to reveal too much of what was said uh, pre record, but uh, mm-hmm. you did mention that this film hit you emotionally a couple times. Yes. Is this one of the times that you cried while watching Fire? It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> a little later. Okay. Just, okay. And it wasn't fa- I just missed it. Just a little tear. Just a little tear. Just yeah, a little tear. I, I got you. I got the you. emotional vibrancy that comes with taking estrogen and being locked down for 30 years. But uh, yeah, yeah, a little something. A little something in the eye. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. 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 All this right. Is this is I'm a, excited to get to those moments. This is yeah. a judgment-free zone, except for when it know. comes of course to judging this fucking movie yeah <laughs> because yeah, cause in the case of this movie i might as well be amy from all the judging i'm gonna do hey. Oh. Hey. 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 so we're back at the fire station again it's another gay porno uh there's like one guy like comes up behind another guy it, it's wild I, <laughs> oh yeah unfortunately like, i really wanted them to kiss yeah me too times. me too I was really they were just two them. big boys having fun together <laughs> and, yeah, and, and in the locker room kiss. like it, it's it's doing oh, some wrestling yeah man. yeah i mean it but reminds me a lot here. of the movie a talking cat which was directed mm. by a guy who did gay softcore pornos uh, okay and he mm. shot it in like his porno set house sure it's very much that same vibe here at here at the Albany Fire Station. I'm going to call him Kyle because I don't remember his name, but it sounds like it's the right name for this sure. guy. Oh, that's sure. the, guy, the guy who's looking in the mirror. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. Wayne? Yeah, when, Doesn't matter. Wayne. Yeah, sure. fine. Kyle, Wayne, same shit. <laughs> Kyle, when Kyle. He's, we'll call him Kyle. When he's looking into the fucking mirror yeah, yeah, at yeah. me as yeah. yeah. that's not good. viewer. Not good. Yeah. I mm-hmm. felt... It like I was in danger. <laughs> you can tell this is the church's like this is the funny guy at church. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, oh let's and write some material for the church people. funny guy. Oh. Oh. And then you, the other you feel it. Then the other guy walks the in. Official position of the worst of all possible worlds. <laughs> but we are saying that the possibility is there. Yes. Uh, this is this is <laughs> all legends are real. So I tried to clip this scene because like it's ostensibly it's a monologue with jokes, right. but really where they're trying to get the humor is all visual. It's right. from yeah. the fact yeah. that it's like a fat guy trying to be seductive. Right. That's the mm-hmm. joke. To them. Yeah, yeah, it's until the and other that, guy walks in, at yeah. which point the smoldering tension yeah. between these two firefighters is so Ooh. thick, yeah. I could cut Ooh. it with a fucking knife. Yeah. Oh, it's so tasty. He keeps peeking around the corner, getting little glances. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, 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 this is just one of those things where, unfortunately, we're a podcast and so we can't show you it. I wish we yeah, could. Yeah, but you this, can always this movie is, purchase the film and, and, and watch it and your money will be going to a good cause. That. Yeah, This uh, movie is so deeply unsexy. And un and so like mm-hmm. anti horny yeah. in like yeah. a very real way that even like just the, like this and little bit of mana from heaven yeah. yes yeah and unromantic just this little bit of mana from heaven about the possibility that yeah, these yeah, two yeah. men might kiss in this room it's like yep it, it, it really sustained me for the next I'm sorry I'm looking at the runtime hour and forty <laughs> minutes <laughs> of this movie yeah. it's so fucking long but the, the god uh, I, the reason that we're spending so much time like in the shit at the beginning is all of the interesting stuff happens in the first 30 yeah, minutes. Essentially yeah. nothing yeah. happens, which kind of makes it feel breezier than a lot mm-hmm. of these other two hour movies where there's a million plots going on. Like and God's there's not all dead. these developments like God's not dead. But because you're just kind of seeing the same beat over and over again, it's not that it's breezy. It's just comparatively breezy when you put it up next to other evangelical movies. Yes. Yes. So I yes. was I was like, wow, this uh, this only felt like seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely hope that when the teens showed up, I was like, fuck, yes, B plot. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come yeah. on. But no, there's no, no just such like They show up and you're immediately yeah. almost annihilated by a fucking train. <laughs> it's just, yeah. The boys God. are fine. In fact, the boys are back in town. Uh, oh. In that town, Albany, Georgia. So the focus on that scene, the, the, the borderline gay porno scene, is pretty much just to reestablish once again that like, there's something going on here about like some people believe in God and some people don't because this is going to keep coming back through again. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to get mm-hmm. saved if you really want to be able to love. And yeah. Caleb 
then taking away from this conversation, goes and talks to his parents. His mom is an emotional woman who just doesn't understand men. Whereas or projection. That, uh, true. <laughs> Whereas his... Couldn't hear a word she said. <laughs> his dad, on the other hand, gives credit to the Lord, rightfully, yeah. for allowing mm. his marriage to stay together for so long. And he encourages Caleb to basically stick around for another 40 days. Yeah, we, we give these like, people like an incredible amount of lore. The dad and yeah. mom like had a rough marriage and they probably would have gotten divorced, but then they became Christians like a few months ago. And now his dad is like building an outdoor chapel out of stumps in the backyard <laughs> or the woods or something. Well, no, I, that, did, they, I didn't clock that. That was, that was, bit. Part, that was part of a that's summer the camp. camp. There's a oh, throwaway summer, line. A summer camp. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. a throwaway line in there. That's like, what's this doing here? Well, it used to be a summer camp. <laughs> it didn't need to be there. <laughs> Those are really it's an advertisement head. for that summer Those camp. Exactly. The summer camp logs and the summer camp. I, cross. <laughs> I went to Catholic summer camp. Oh, hell as yeah. A, as a teen, it's Catholic paintball camp. Maybe I was wow. talking about Audrey. Was I talking about Whoa. this on the show you recently? On the show, and I, I shit. I, I, I unearthed this. I unearthed this memory oh recently. Oh my god! But that, that we there was straight up that there was like log benches and a big wooden cross in okay. the woods was like the main thing. And I saw this, and that like that hit me. I was like, oh, oh my god. god, okay. To me, I was like, oh, this does actually. I don't know why they're walking around back there, but I was sure. like, oh, I've been to this place. I've been to woods, Jesus. Great spot. <laughs> I guess we just do do our Christian summer camps different in the West. That could be it. There's there's actual buildings. This is a little Ohio style. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like whole, you know, like picnic tables, things like that. Yeah. Usually the cross is indoors too. You know, you just you don't you don't want to do the crucifixion outside. We do things a little different down here in the south of <laughs> Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> so uh, Caleb now having heard the challenge from his dad, we get another interstitial with Armin Van Buren, the hot doctor. And uh, mm-hmm. then we move on to more wisdom being imparted by Michael. You remember yeah. Michael? He's he's back in pog form. <laughs> he's my favorite character. <laughs> why, is the, why is that, Audrey? I don't know. The wisdom, I guess. They portray him <laughs> as being so wise. I need like an cool anchor. Yeah. Sure. I need like a, I need somebody that I can trust in this fucking movie. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I can trust him. Yeah. yeah. No, he genuinely seems like someone you could trust. So to preface this, he has taken a, a salt shaker and a pepper shaker. And glued them together with super yeah. glue. Classic prank. Caleb, when two people get married, it's for better or for worse. And he's holding them in front or of his face. For poor, in sickness and in health. I know that. But <laughs> marriages aren't fireproof. Sometimes you get burned. Oh, okay. hey. Fireproof doesn't mean that a fire will never come. Oh. But that when it comes, you'll be able to withstand it. Oh. So. Notice that uh, there was no mention of the salt and pepper shaker. That's because we're doing the old double metaphor here. <laughs> we love uh, so a double metaphor. He started with the salt and pepper oh. said they're made up of different stuff. They have different tastes, but they always go together. Um, so he glues the two shakers together and Kirk Cameron's like, now, why are you doing that? <laughs> And then once we finish this conversation, Kirk takes it and he's going to take the salt and pepper shaker apart. Right. And then he's like, no. Don't take it apart. Right. Because then they'll break. Right. Yeah. Why did we have the fireproofing discussion in here? Why did we need to talk about the movie? Why did I drop the title of the movie? (laughs) Do it in a different discussion. We already (laughs) have the salt and pepper shaker. This becomes the central metaphor. This becomes the last image of the movie is the salt (laughs) and pepper shaker. It is. It is. It is. It's very straight. Yeah, no, the movie's not called Salt and Pepper, but you think it would be. It could be. Ladies and gentlemen, salt (laughs) and pepper. (laughs) Black pepper is hot. Audrey like Donovan, I, I am I'm wondering from the two of you, like, what does this kind of thinking do to relationships and people? Oh, my God. The idea that if you would be broken by separating from something that is not serving you, uh, you see that like, you hear that a lot. People will be like, uh, I don't think I could live without this person. And it's like, well, everything you tell me about them is that they make you fucking miserable. Yeah. constantly mm-hmm. is, so it sounds like you could do pretty fucking good without him actually it's yeah. just codependency like yeah. that's mm-hmm. just what it's what that is if you feel like you would die 
without your partner, you would be incomplete. And that's not to say like you can have that strength of supporting each other and all of that. But I, I think we discourage that and talk about that a lot that like mm-hmm. if you're not complete by yourself, you are bringing it, it, it's a toxic dynamic like that. Because if you don't have that out, if you feel like trapped within a relationship like that, that's not good for your mental health. That's not good for examining what the most healthy option to to do in a scenario is. And so that's such a fucked message. And also a stupid as shit metaphor, because why would you ever want the salt and pepper glued to like, they they have to function individually. You don't want the same amount of both of those things. Right, that's actually a good point. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. marrying them together has completely ruined them. It's destroyed. (laughs) There's a point at which later on in the movie, one of the firefighters comes across the salt and pepper shakers like, hey, why are these glued together? I can't use them anymore. (laughs) I have to say, too, I I completely literally missed all of this stuff until now. I thought that was a prank. And at the end, when they showed up, I was like, why? (laughs) Did they? Did he tell his wife about the funny salt and pepper prank? And they were like, "Yeah, we're on the cake." I right, because they baffled. they play pranks. Yeah. Like th- that's the yeah. thing about the fire station. They, they, right. they, they do this. They hot do the whole sauce hot sauce prank where Kirk right, Cameron right, is right. like again sublimating his own violent impulses towards this mm-hmm. other guy by being like, "Yeah, oh, we're just yeah. gonna chug hot." Sauce. Apparently, in the first draft of the two drafts of this script, uh, mm. this was gonna be a Listerine chugging competition. <laughs> Oh, and I was like, these are not They don't drink do that. alcohol. Uh, that, right. Yeah, that's, that's pretty pretty spicy. I mean, that would have saved us, you know, having Kirk Cameron on the planet anymore. <laughs> but you know, um. yeah. So it turns out he fakes <laughs> drinking hot sauce. They made a little fake label. Their props master, or or you know, just some lady probably made a label for this hot sauce for no money. Um, I will say the label. The label looks good. It's good. It's, it's called yeah, God's yeah, called God. God's wrath yeah. or wrath I, of I really, God. I looked it up because I was like, yeah. is this a brand of hot sauce that no. maybe, you know, somebody connected to the church owns? But no, it's just a prop. And it says uh, hotter than the lake of fire on the little slogan because they, they talked nice. about this on the commentary. And then they get really serious while this hot sauce chugging scene is going. And they say there is symbolism there. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like astral projecting out of my body. I'm so mad. There's something here too that, that brought me also back to like early angry teenage Donovan, like just general Christian white Uh dude vibes Mm. with this kind of prank, right? Like there's this sense of, okay, porno is bad and evil. Drugs Mm -hmm. and stuff are bad and evil. Mainstream culture is bad and evil. So what, what are like the bits? What are the jokes that are appropriate? Well, it's inflicting pain yeah. on each other. Yeah. That's yeah. morally fine is to, uh, is to feel yeah. pain and all of these things. And I like remember being a teenager and like a bunch of like pranks and shit you would do is just like, is just hurting each other. And yeah. that's like, that's the whole, no, that's fine. Actually, that's yeah. funny. It, it doesn't touch on any taboo topics. You're just chugging hot sauce. But that's that's like that's kind of deranged. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that like there is an extent to which pranks, including pranks that cause you pain, can be funny. For um, sure. But like, I like there's a I like uh, experiencing pain in certain hmm. circumstances. Okay. Good, good to know, Brian. Thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> but like, boats involved. <laughs> yeah. like, <there's, laughs> I want to get dobbed by a four stack steamship. <laughs> I, I, I think that like there's a big difference between like mild jackass type stuff. You know, there's a reason jackass is so popular. Obviously, is it's 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 funny to watch. But there's there's a difference between like kind of good hearted pranks where you're hurting yourself a little bit and hurting others a little bit, and like forcing somebody to chug an entire bottle of hot sauce, which yeah. is actually dangerous you know what i mean yeah, right. yeah. it depends I, I, on the hot sauce you know if someone chugs I mean, like a called bottle of cholula that's not gonna be sure, a big that's, deal yeah, yeah but this, is, this that, is called but... god's wrath i think it's <laughs> probably got a few ghost yeah, peppers he's in there. Taking right. the <laughs> sin upon himself there is mm. symbolism there mm. <laughs> Audrey, he, he even later in the film says do you know what that did to me yeah <laughs> yeah it's so pain it's, it's his a, delivery. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's another kind of joke you can do. You can do poo poo jokes. You can That's do true. you can do a little That's bit of awesome. a little oh, bit of pee pee sure. and poo poo. You can do there's always there's always great jokes about like the level of salvation that you've received or something like that. Um, good. If if you want to yep. watch another Christian movie, I don't. Uh, I do. Yes, you do. Nope. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> 
Um, there, there's a movie that came out around 2004 that actually was focused on evangelizing. So like it wasn't mm. a movie with like explicitly Christian grievances and things throughout it. It's just like people going and skateboarding and then you're listening to like bleach in, in the background. Mm. A lot of chairs flipped around. Yeah. yeah. Hey, kids. Of, let, let me level with you. <laughs> yeah. It was called Extreme Days and it has uh, oh, yes. yeah. it yeah, has wow. a, that a Rufio show. from Hook in it too. Dante And Bosco. it's just wow. like a movie about people doing extreme sports. There's like a very brief moment where something about the gospel is kind of brought up, but then the rest of the time it's just people getting into to 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 pranks. You know, they're shooting paintballs at each other. There's jokes about falafels. There's uh, there's blue darts. You know, there's all the kinds of acceptable jokes that you can get to. And it goes right up to that edge. And it's just like, yeah, this is just every fucking like youth group. Right. Like travel yeah. uh, trip that we ever did where you'd eat stuff that was like dipped in chocolate and be like, oh, is this an apple or is it an onion? Ha 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 ha. Right. right. That's right. what all sure. this was. And then people would just do like the most vile, horrifying shit behind closed doors. You can see examples of that with stuff like uh, Ron Luce's Teen Mania, also known yeah. as Acquire the Fire. Uh-huh. Just the horrifying amounts of hazing that were going on behind closed doors. And this is this is that sort of like violence is actually a big part of like the evangelical id. Mm-hmm. It's just that it gets expressed, as you said, Brian, behind closed doors. Yeah. So we have now talked a fair bit about uh, different aspects of fireproofing and firefighting. And, you know, I, I want to die, but we have miles to go before we sleep. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, uh, wait, I'm, I'm hmm. so sorry. Um, Are you sorry? There's there's an envelope. <laughs> Not convinced that, that you're sorry. Been, <laughs> that, that's just been shoved into my hands. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Um, there's an there's an audio tape in here. Oh, um, better open it up. Return address. It's from Kirk Cameron. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> How do you do, Satanists? Kirk Thomas Cameron here, star of the hit TV show Growing Pains, all three of the original Left Behind films, and Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas, the film where I spend a solid five minutes explaining that Santa is real, a Christian, and my own personal friend. It has come to my attention that the so-called hosts of the Worst of All Possible Worlds podcast sullied and dragged my name through the mud, saying that I, Kirk Cameron, among others, other things, quote, look like if a Dilbert cartoon came to life and was gay, unquote, and, quote, like a Keebler elf who's really into peeping, unquote, and perhaps most infuriatingly, you contemptible Marxists have the audacity to imply that I hate my old co-star Leonardo DiCaprio because I was jealous of his success and fame. This is unequivocally untrue. I hate my old co-star Leonardo DiCaprio because he got to ride on the biggest ship of all, the Titanic. Oh, he thinks he's so great because he got to be king of the world on top of the most friggable ship that side of the HSS Pinafore. It's not fair. I'm tired of it. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's like, oh, 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 I don't feel so good. Oh, God. My stomach. Oh, Greetings, I am Jeremiah, the great snake that resides in the tum-tum of Kirk Cameron. Ooh! Yes, yes, you fuckers figured it out. I live inside him, feeding on his hate, so that one day I might make sweet love to the world. The truth is, it gets lonely living inside the tum-tum of Kirk Cameron. There can be such a thing as too much hate. So one day, I decided to give him something to love. I gave him my love for boats. There's something so grand, so majestic about mankind's denial of the deep monstrosity of the sea. The deluded notion that you can out a fox the great puddle of God's madness by getting on a piece of wood and casting yourself out into its infinite embrace. It's inspiring. And when I get big enough, just get to be like such a big snake, I'm going to make sweet love to the world. But it won't be the world I'm thinking of. Oh no, it'll be of great white sails piercing through the wind, venturing out into a horizon so beautiful and unknowable that 
and it would pull the world asunder. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna love that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must return to slumber. Please don't tell Kirk about me. He might not be so hateful if he knew it was feeding me. And we can't have that now, can we? See you soon. Ah, huh. I feel weird. Anyway, I'm Cut Cameron and I fuck boats. Why does my mouth taste like a snake? Do y'all ever listen to One Week by the Bare Naked Ladies? Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and hear the line, Kirk Cameron's got the mad hits instead of what's actually in there? Because if not, welcome to my hell. And welcome back to our collective hell as we continue right. our trek oh. through Fireproof. Yeah, this really is the worst of all possible worlds. We've been talking about books, and I guess it's time that we talk about the book. Mm. Not that one. Oh, not the, oh, not old, the Holy Bible, not that okay. book with 66 books in it and not a single book more. I don't want to hear from any of you fucking Catholics or Orthodoxes. <laughs> hey, the book of Jubilees. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's my favorite X-Men Bible. Ooh, ooh, what, what, how, <laughs> what if you grow up and you miss out on your favorite character, Tobit? What's going to happen then? <laughs> Fuck Tobit. All my homies hate Tobit. Tobit's a fucking bitch. Come at me. So there is another book, a handwritten book that's given mm. to Kirk Cameron. It's given to little Caleb mm. by his grown mm. adult father who looks his large adult who father. Who looks so much like yes. Dick Cheney. Doesn't sound <laughs> like him. so unsettling. <laughs> it's so unsettling. I was seeing Chevy Chase. I think Ooh. Dick Cheney is more accurate. Yeah. Dick Chase. Great porn name. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God damn. Chase, Chase Dick. Good Broadway theater also, actor name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except that it would be something with because it, they've always got the middle name, so it'd be like Chase Matthew Dick or something like that. Mm -hmm. I only mm -hmm. fuck Matthew Dicks. That's how I spent most of the first season of Lost. So, so um, <laughs> you're not doing the so. I'm doing the so. I'm still on the topic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm regaining this. <laughs> I'm committing my time. Room. I am committing to Tobits. I am the <laughs> eldest boy. I'm the youngest, actually. I'm the youngest of the three of us. Um, mm -hmm. So, where was I? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, come on. So, Dick Cheney has this. It's a journal. It's this handwritten yeah. journal called... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it called, boys? The Love Dare. The Love Dare. Ooh, well, that's one serum. boy out of the two boys that... Are, that Love Serum. So <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> now it's all got to stay in. Yeah. Up at yeah, the top. it's all... Jesus. Son, this book is called the, the T-Slur Serum <laughs> Dare. <laughs> How much can you chug? And this, it's up to you. <laughs> and so this book ha is, is written like a daily devotional because, yes. surprise, it is. You wait, can wait. buy this book right now, written by the writers and directors of this movie. Uh, and it's, it's a 40-day challenge, much like a yes. TikTok challenge, <laughs> where you each day you're like, Give your wife a tiny gift or right. uh, study your wife or pray for your <laughs> wife. So being the only literate member of this podcast, yeah. I kind of had yep. to check the book out for myself. And if you go on the Internet Archive, there's actually a scan, a full scan of this book. And whoever put it in also was doing the exercises in the book yeah. and taking the notes down. Hell yeah. yeah. Which is and unfortunately not on all of the chapters, only on some of them. But it's really interesting because like that's great, too, because then you that book can't get resold. So people have to keep buying it new. Right. Right. It's a workbook. Yeah. This thing and, has moved, uh, I think, yeah. three and a half million oh, copies, wow. something Fuck. like that. Yeah. So the the dare Boy. the dare that I have a screenshot of the page here from is uh, and I don't know what day this is, but ask your spouse to tell you three things that cause him or her to be uncomfortable or irritated with you. You must do so without attacking them. Or justifying your behavior. This is from their perspective only. The prompt then says, what things did your spouse point out about you that need your attention? How did you handle hearing it? What do you plan to do to improve these areas? And there are three items on here. 
Number one is let go of grudges. Number two is let me be an adult about making golf poker decisions. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but there's a lot implied there. I got there. an idea about what that means. <laughs> uh, this, this is not in line with Southern Baptist morality, let me tell you. No, uh, there's no, no these, poker decisions no. to be made in, in, a, in a good Baptist household. No, this, this book is probably a family in Las Vegas or something. Um, and then mm. third, third point, try to be on time or even early okay they sound like they're in real deep distress this couple yeah. it sounds yeah. like they're really fucked <laughs> <laughs> can't make it can't make it anywhere on time always hounding me about the money i'm spending at the poker table <laughs> and i can't even remember the first one it's gone <laughs> Like most of the plot of this movie, yeah. I feel yeah. like as we move through it, the more but I there forget was a it. point. There was this horrifying point. Even though I'd seen this movie before, uh, when I was watching yeah. this again, I was like, "Oh no, are they going to do all forty days?" Because we get through like the first mm. six, and they're like logging, right. so, but like they still have to sell the book. You can't do each day in the movie because then yeah. people won't buy the book. Right. And yeah. oh, I was so worried. <laughs> Same. And what this does is like they're not working on their marriage. This no. is not a movie about salvaging a marriage, which is something you have to do together. Mutually. Exactly. This is right. about one guy reading a book and trying to do little like secret good deeds so that the marriage at its very last moment will get saved. Yeah. What is Kurt Cameron but the Eddie McDowd of the Christian universe, <laughs> right? I don't even know what that means, AJ. You got to do a hundred. You got to have a hundred. You got to do a hundred good you deeds. You could have just done my name is a Earl. dog forever. You could have done my name oh, is Earl, which is no, the no, same no. plot, Seth but he's not Green a dog. Seth Green is still in that dog body. I am thoroughly convinced. Whoever this Seth Green claims to be that's like wandering mm -hmm, around mm -hmm. right now, that's not really Seth Green. No. He's still trapped in that dog's yeah. body. Something that I would like to do here real quick <laughs> is um, go through a couple of the exercises in the Love Dare book. <sighs> okay. Just to, okay. Just to tell you what they are. Oh, because hell yeah. Be, That's wait. great, honest, Josh, because I've already made coffee for you. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you for your support. Yeah. And then um, he poured it down the drain. <laughs> 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 Only because you rejected it. Oh, fuck. I, I think that, honestly, a lot of these exercises are, they're decent. Like, if there's something yeah, that a couple is doing for each other right if this is yeah. a mutual exercise of trust mm -hmm. i could see this book helping and a relationship probably if but it's I'm, something that has a mediator present sure like a but counselor I, sure. or therapist but i'm curious to hear sort of like gut thoughts from the two of you audrey and dono given that you are relationship experts on yes. sort of these activities That's right ambitious i have a doctor so the dare for day one is just to say nothing negative to your spouse at all for a day but if you did that most days <laughs> of your life. Yeah. What if you just did that a lot of well, days? I think that's what they're trying to do, right? Is they're trying to yeah. get you into a different way of thinking where rather than like being reactive, you're sort of thinking about what you say rather than going yeah. to a place of harsh negativity, right? Right. If you're if you're in that mode where you're like, what the fuck is wrong with the dishes? Right. All the time, then which happens it might in this be movie. helpful to, to step back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the on the baseline, <laughs> this book is about habit building. It's a classic yeah, self-help exactly. habit building book. Yeah, here's mm -hmm. here, day two. Uh, in addition to saying nothing negative to your spouse again today, do at least one unexpected gesture as an act of kindness. Right. And we see Kirk Cameron in the movie make his wife coffee, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. then she says, I don't have time for coffee and just like marches out of the room. And then Kirk Cameron's like, fine, I also don't have time for coffee <laughs> and destroys all the coffee. So dear number three, whatever you put your time, energy and money into will become more Born. important to you. Born. Uh it, <laughs> It's hard, it's hard to care Golf poker points, points. <laughs> it's hard to care for something you are not investing in along with restraining from negative comments buy your spouse something that says i was thinking of you today and they do this big scene yeah. where where caleb is like on the phone he's like what's the cheapest flower i can buy for my wife right. this one was interesting to me because generally speaking I, I think i'm on the same page of like yeah these are there's some good stuff in there like yeah. Stop being so selfish. Try to pay attention to your partner's mm -hmm. needs. Try to work on like negative patterns that you've fallen into or whatever. That's all cool. This one in particular read like I got a sense of like um, 
I don't know if it's full on prosperity gospel kind of stuff, but this like capitalist right. sense of like what you invest in. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's actually, it needs to be money that you spend. And this weird split of like, I mean, that's a, that's a nice gesture and like uh-huh. put money you were going to spend on something for yourself, get something for your partner. Yeah. Like that's cool and thoughtful, but there was this weirdness, just the language of invest there. Yeah. Read to me very like capitalist Christianity in this, in this mm-hmm. weird way. And it kind of stood out. I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily bad. All that you ever see in this movie is gestures and specifically gestures that like cost money. I mean, aside from the fact that he's regularly doing dishes by the end, it's always like something gets bought, something gets put in place, money Mm -hmm. gets allocated this way. And it's always like, and I mean, this is a problem with movies depicting romance in general. It's always like a large gesture or something like that. But like, that's it. It's really it. Yeah. In, in this whole film, because, again, we don't see them together like right. ever. Yeah, right. right. They're, too, they're always in their own little they spheres. They are two completely separate people. It's just not a marriage. These are just two guys. <laughs> I, I also think it's like sort of it's sort of a huge indictment on society in general that the only way that men will know how to behave well is if their dad takes them on long walks in the woods and yeah. gives them these secret totems and Absolutely. these tiny books that they can right. read it, because society is just constantly leading them astray and they have no outlet for this stuff. Like, Kirk Cameron doesn't talk to anyone about his emotions, even when his dad basically backs him into a corner and says, I fucked your wife because <laughs> I have something you don't. Mm-hmm. He doesn't express emotion. He just gives in to God, right? He gives in to being cucked by Jesus. <laughs> that is the other thing that, and I, you know, it's, it's what fucking religion. What scene did you watch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm actually a little bit curious. I'm confused now. What? So th- there's a Maybe point where the dad is leaning. read sex into no. everything? Yes. <laughs> so, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, hold on. I have textual evidence for no, this. No, you don't. So all these scenes in this fucking movie blend the fuck together, Correct. right? It's just yeah. kind of like, it's like it's like the end of Acura. It's just like a, a giant Christian evil mess. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> but there's a bunch of beings uh, and scenes. And faces and just limbs akimbo. Um, <laughs> but there's a scene where uh, when the conversion happens, yeah. when c- the inevitable Kirk Cameron conversion happens, where he's sitting on a stump in front of the giant cross. And again, this like... Christian camp that right. just Former happens to be camp. outside right. Right. of their home. Well, yeah, right. well, that's um, the cross that they put gasoline on at the end of the summer, and they. <laughs> oh, sure, 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 sure. Of course, <laughs> of course, it's Georgia. <laughs> it's just the culture there. Michael's not invited. I was Sorry, we're all just we're all just rich people north of Richmond here. I was really oh, impressed, honestly, God. that they used the new Georgia flag rather than the original one. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. Um, but the dad, Dick Cheney, is leaning against the cross at this point. Yeah, right. What an image. And, and he's and he's saying the reason you can't love your wife is because you can't give her what you know I have. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, That's the dog. exact quote from Dick Cheney. Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm no gonna stop. I'm gonna about play the clip. The I'm gonna play the clip. Son, you just asked me, how can someone show love over and over again when they're constantly rejected? Caleb, the answer is, you can't love her because you can't give her what you don't have. I couldn't truly love your mother until I understood what love really was. It's not because I get some reward out of it. I've now made a decision to love your mother whether she deserves it or not. Get her ass. Son, God loves you even though you don't deserve it. Even though you've rejected him, spat in his face. Oh. <laughs> so, no, he's talking about the cry. You fucking pervert. The things that you dude. see <laughs> in every second, goddamn dude. thing that we watch, you filthy, <laughs> filthy <laughs> fucking Teague. You goddamn so, papist sack of shit. <laughs> I'm so horny, Brian. I mean, my here's what I, here's, 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 let, let I'm me, just so horny. Let me sort of stake out a sort of central spot between the two of you real quick. Um, Great. Because I did notice there's a scene before that one where um, Kirk Cameron's talking to his dad. And, and his dad does express something pretty openly that, that surprised me. I was surprised to hear him talk to his son mm. in this way. I'd like to come. <laughs> I think he's pretty open. I think he's pretty open about talking about what it is that he needs sexual. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. So this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
all that. This insane thought that like so many Christians have, which is that no one has ever been able to love another human being because they're not yeah. Christian. Like unless Christ, unless you yeah. somehow no one ever loved each other before fucking like 33 CE. Dog, they do that for everything. everything. You can't yeah. you can have no morality yeah. without Christ. You can have no a Law, desire yeah. to help another yeah. without Christ, which right. I used to, I used to go on OSU campus and just fucking yell at the at the preachers and shit that would come and I would go and yell like I would yeah. just yell at them like you're a fucking <laughs> idiot yeah, 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 yeah. fuck off go away I would tickle them a little bit well that's the thing that, that's, the thing. that's <laughs> what they want they genuinely do just want to be tickled that. the whole like conception of, in Christianity of loving God I don't feel like is analogous to like a partner like well, this weird that's sense because of... you haven't read the fucking Bible, you goddamn <laughs> fucking Rome worshiping idiot. Because the Apostle Paul, if he ever read his epistles, <laughs> that's right. Not you didn't read the Paul, epistles, bitch. Just Paul. Because we don't yeah. venerate saints. We don't pray to people in this house. No. He says yeah. in yeah. his letter to the Eph Ephesians, I think, that a husband's relationship with his wife is the same as Christ with the church. You it's become true. your wife's God. And whenever she handpicks you... It's the same, and this movie does the illustration. It's the same as Jesus Christ getting tortured by the Romans. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was just the, the idea that you become your wife's god. Yeah. No. I'd like to no. Come. Yeah. Yeah. It's huh. it's it's great. I mean, he like he's like yeah. This room. What you're going through with your wife reminds me of someone who like sort of like looks over at the cross. I must have been replaying Operation Wall Climber in Armored Core <laughs> Six Fires of Rubicon during that part. I'm so bad at that game, but it's I so love it hard. so much. Yeah. It's so hard. So AJ uh, let his deranged sexual fantasies get in the way of what was actually <laughs> bizarre and disturbing about that scene. There's a point where like the the camera is positioned at his dick level <laughs> and is slowly zooming in on his dad as if he were like a god, right? Mm. But again, staying at dick level. Sure. And it's very sinister. <laughs> yeah, right? there, there's something about this scene that is deeply, deeply unnerving. And I know it's supposed to be like a, a jubilant moment for the people right. in the audience, right? He's coming to the Lord. He's coming to the Lord. Well, not, not only has he come back and, you know, been embraced by the arms of the Lord. I'm come. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Did I ever want to do this? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank yeah. You. Yes, Brian. Correct. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, when I was, when it was very so it's narrow. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? One more, one more. Can we get one more? Oh, Dang. There it is. There it is. Um, <laughs> that that is our that is our compilation. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that completes the whole sequence. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it, it's wonderful. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that something that's interesting about the where this scene is positioned too, because we didn't mention this, is that this sort of walk with his dad and then coming to to Christ. Uh, this happens off the back of Kirk Cameron getting fully fucking rejected yeah. by his wife. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. and, and we, we even have the, the little clip of like her reaction. He's tried to make a big thing for her, like a romantic dinner, and she's having none of it. Let me be real clear with you about something. I do not love you. The end. Fade to black. Really? That's, that yeah, that should probably be it, man. Like, you should probably just wrap it up there. I do not love you. Yeah. Okay. This marriage was I over. Guess I'll sign the papers. I don't know. This was yeah. over before the movie started, right? Like they yes. made that yes. really clear, right? They really wanted you to rescue it from the brink, but they were down the brink. They they were right. they were finished. The the brink is history, which is so yeah. strange because it like they don't. There's a couple things that it fails to do. For one thing, it fails to show you whatever made them like each other in the first place. Right. There's yeah. not even a passing mention in conversation of what they originally found attractive about well, each Josh, other. Well, Josh, why don't you Nor check out the novelization? Okay, well, why don't you suck my dick, okay? <laughs> 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 it, 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 
like there, there's what are you Kurt Cameron's dad <laughs> yes <laughs> yes it, in, <laughs> uh, no, but like I, I, I think it's like there is a failure to communicate those things. There is a failure to ground us in the stakes of this relationship. There's a failure to make us care about these characters as people in any way, shape or form whatsoever. It's bringing us into the point in the story, like you said, where the thing has already failed. What are we supposed to be cheering for here? Right. Marriage between one man and one woman. And that's my like qualm generally with the, we have to approach this like God, it's unconditional love that if you, it's a moral failing to leave a relationship where you are being menaced with yeah. Kurt Cameron's fists and yelling and all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. That's it, it's, it's coercive. Yeah. It puts this moral framing on everything that you are, you have to work through that. You're not allowed to leave when this, the, the wife in this should like, if this was on the show, we would tell her to leave. Jeez, it's yeah. a crazy yeah. abusive situation. And it's that yeah. kind of like, structural unconditional love that like seems like this good thing on the surface but i think does a lot of cover for fucking horrific shit happening in relationships like this it's it's genuinely very scary even though this is the case kirk cameron has been saved right caleb he's he's, he he loves the lord now and loving the lord ultimately once you love the lord then you know how to love yeah jesus it's like you're having jesus in your bed all the time it's great (laughs) my sincere hope at this point in the film is that she does not that she keeps going she still she's on an escape trajectory and she still keeps going she leaves him mm-hmm. he finds a love for christ right. becomes the youth pastor that he is destined yes. to be because of his piercing blue eyes and giant forehead sure. and just <laughs> just devotes himself to the lord yeah and then yeah. he gets to be god's problem <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fuck gump well and let's be very clear he is a problem because by becoming a christian it somehow makes him worse at firefighting <laughs> because they get another call and he has to go fight this fire and there's a kid inside but he fails to like scope it out tactically ahead of time. Well, he and doesn't, gets yeah, trapped he, he in forgets a room. his walkie talkie and then he has right. to like chop his way through Damn. the wooden floor with like amateur just shit. Just doing it for real too. Like that's just a real hardwood floor again in this house that the fire department was like, yeah, we're burning it down anyway. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, you awesome. Cameron in there, fine. <laughs> <laughs> we need to showcase Mr. Cameron's act skills somewhere in this film. I <laughs> like to portray it realistically. That, that, that part when he's chopping the floor with the ax just uh, reminded me of like a QTE from yeah. any video game circa 2006 where it's like, just, I'm just fucking mashing the F button, dude. When is this going to be over? <laughs> he just keeps paying respects. I want you to use the axe. So, why is it a different button? It's just the same switch. Swing. Why would it be B now? Yes. Yes. So Caleb, having converted, also comes to the, the fire station. He talks to his friend to, to right. let him know that he's converted. I'm in. You're in. Yeah, I'm in. Now, are you saying that you want to be in? I'm saying I'm in. You're really in. I'm really in. Because you can't be half in and say you're in. You got to be all in, brother. I'm saying I'm all in. Oh, Caleb, I can't believe it, man. Man. (laughs) You're my brother. (laughs) I'm your brother? Yeah, man, you're my brother from another mother. But now we got the same father. Uh... Does anyone else (laughs) notice that when Kirk Cameron is in scenes with black characters, his voice changes? (laughs) Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, I did notice that. It's called code switching. Deeply (laughs) uncomfortable way. Is it called code switching? <laughs> well, I mean, what it, 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 like it's trying to get to a place where it's yeah. like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. We're cool, yeah. right? Code switching implies a certain facility <laughs> with communication <laughs> sure, uh, sure. that I think he lacks. He's yeah. code switching. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what does happen though. Uh, is that as a result then of this firefight where he saves this girl from a burning house, right? Well, that sounds like there were firearms. That sounds like they were shooting at them. <laughs> <laughs> there was a full-on yeah. gunfight. <laughs> um, Caleb gets admitted to the ER, right? Because yeah. he's been inhaling a bunch of smoke and shit. And, and wouldn't yeah. you know it? Wouldn't you know it? The doctor oh. attending him in the ER is fucking Armin Van Buren. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dr. He plays him some Dr. episodes Gavin. of the State of Trance. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and 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 right at right at that moment, Caleb is like, "Fuck! I can't compete with this sexual magnetism of Doctor <laughs> right. Gavin." 
<laughs> right, 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 right. right. Trench coat. His wife shows up. She's like, oh, no, you're in the ER. He's like, yeah. And then she's like, okay, I'm going to leave now. I got to balance. Leaving the two of them yeah. alone together, which in the right hands could be such an interesting scene. Yeah. And yes. we don't but we haven't get established it. We don't this. get yeah. a scene. Happens. We do get a scene of them both together a little bit later. Uh, because Kurt Cameron is like, I, I got, I heard some, I heard some scuttlebutt about this fellow. I found a little note while I was doing my, my daily chores from the love challenge, the love dare. And Mm -hmm. Dr. Gavin is making moves on my wife and he goes and he threatens this man physically. But first he has to call the hospital and say, Hey, does someone named Gavin work there? Oh, I don't have any last name. Do you mean mean Dr. Calvert? Definitely. Here's his address. Now we got a few Gavins here. Can you give me any more information? I'll give you some, maybe their birth dates. Here's their office numbers, license plates. Yeah. Yeah. And what's so confusing about all of this is that after he confronts him by just fully putting his fist in Dr. Gavin's face. Dr. Gavin pulls a wedding ring. Yeah, it turns out of yeah. turns out that yes. Dr. Gavin's been married this whole time. God damn it, uh, Dr. Gavin. So of course we've Come seen on, Kirk man. Cameron do some behaviors in this that are not supposed to be emulated, but they're supposed to be empathized with, right? Like yeah, it's understand, like, understandable. Yeah, like this, yeah, yeah. He he just like me for real. I also make right. these boat <laughs> mistakes just like him. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to be I want to be very clear here. The directors of this movie want you to threaten men who might be making moves on your wife. They say this 100% in the commentary that he is entirely within his rights as a husband, who is, of course, the Christ to his wife, the disciple, that he must go in and punch the competing Christ. (sighs) That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, these guys and, and like these guys are such fucking weenies. I mean, they made fireproof. Come on, these are not yeah, masculine yeah. men making these movies. No, I mean, look, it, it was it badass when Kirk Cameron uh, defied his doctor's orders and peeled the skin <laughs> off of his finger as he reapplied his <laughs> ring, even though being told you still have burns on your hands. It's bad. Something that I wanted to note as well is that the thing that sort of gives Kirk Cameron the strength to go and confront Dr. Gavin is that he has expelled lust from his own life. He has taken a baseball bat to his computer (laughs) in the style of office space or fucking um, Zoolander. His computer is old enough to have been in office space. That computer could vote in 2008. (laughs) This is also where we get sort of a reprise of the running joke where his neighbor looks on. Yeah. But this is this is where we should take just a moment here to talk about the pornos because yes. we had mentioned mm. that there's this running thing and they can't say it explicitly. Yeah, they can't say because porno. Mm. they're not allowed to actually mention it by name. They cannot depict anything that remotely resembles actual porno. Yeah, they want kids uh, to so, watch this movie. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. as we've been sort of riffing about, you either see him looking at pictures of boats or at one <laughs> point you see a woman who is fully clothed yeah. looking at the screen and then underneath it, it says in big red text, uh, what want to see more or something like that, right? Yeah, I think it's wanna just want to see. Want to see. Wanna see. Wanna see. They actually With had to two change this. Hearts. They actually had to change this. Uh, it originally said "want to see the rest of me," huh? And, uh, and they couldn't. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't want that to be a stumbling block for the kids in the audience. So uh, sure. they, they they had to change it to "want to see." And you got like, yeah, you got your classic like milf face. I mean, they did their research on what these pop ups look like. It looks real. <laughs> this is true. Uh, but yes, the, but this research. Is, this is pretty ridiculous because when we talked about every young man's battle, at least they named the thing mm-hmm. right, like explicitly. Right. They graffiti. talk about what it is. They say. Yeah. Uh, and there, there, I think there's one line, uh, I think it's the, maybe the dad who says the word pornography yeah, because they always, time. they always pronounce it that way. Pornography. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you look in the love dare again, the book, mm-hmm. the 40 day book day 24, the dare is, and I quote, <clears throat> end it now. Nice. Identify every object of lust in your life and remove it. Single out every lie you've swallowed in pursuing forbidden pleasure and (laughs) reject it. Lust cannot be allowed to live in a back bedroom. It must be killed and destroyed to death and replaced with the sure promises of God and a heart filled 
with his perfect you luck. You can't have lust in your bedroom? How are you uh, supposed to? The back bedroom. No. <laughs> not, not, not your the bedroom, back one. yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> the purposes of procreation, but not right. the back bedroom. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Bedroom. <laughs> front bedroom <laughs> only. that's where the computer is. <laughs> the back bedroom. Funny. This is very funny to me, too, because without that context of just naming pornography, like yeah. referring it to like, you're spending time on the internet, shameful stuff. He kills right. the, the whole fucking computer. It comes across as like the internet is is just evil. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. cannot go on Wikipedia, and the fact that you destroy. Are you not using the? Does the wife never use the computer? Are you That's not using it for fun? Right. anything else? Yeah, but bro, it's, it's it's like they don't have smartphones yet. This is two thousand eight. They've got flip yeah. phones. Like that's the right. home it's computer. Expensive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So not so cheap. This is this is a small thing, but it really it really uh, struck my eye. There is a post-it note. Mm. On the computer that says "Call Jay," okay. and then he destroys the computer. Poor Jay! So I can only come to the conclusion that Jay is never getting called, uh, mm. no. and that is the true tragedy of Firewebs. He's Fire still Wars. sitting next to a silent phone yeah. to this day. <laughs> that is yeah, no no just spiderwebs all over him. <laughs> I Poor Jay bet. is out of the picture. Jay is O. Yeah. J O, if you <laughs> will. <laughs> So <laughs> that's not over. anything. Thank you for laughing None at that. You don't like Colin J. Any of you fellas out good. there like Colin J, if you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Call him up. Have a good time. Spend a couple that's minutes. Like, that sounds like an old timey like friend of Dorothy. <laughs> yeah. I, was, yeah. I was calling <laughs> Jay last weekend. <laughs> Jay, Jay can get you a great deal on a tugboat. <laughs> You were sitting on tugboat. I know you were sitting on tugboat. <laughs> I really was. There's, really a post, there's a little post it note on my computer that says tugboat <laughs> underlined four times. <laughs> Colin J would be such a good name for a podcast. Yeah. Welcome back to Colin J. We're doing bird calls. Ooh, it's a no, birding no, no, podcast. No. It's what it yes. is. Colin show with Jay Moore. It's one of those really mm. horrible, like, recap shows but they watch every episode of every late night show jay leno has ever hosted oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. oh shit no that would kick (laughs) ass actually (laughs) the recap of like a monologue each week so anyway so jay comes to the stage and he starts talking about the deal about monica Lewinsky for for the 56 consecutive weeks he starts asking me if i've seen this or heard of this obviously i haven't because he hasn't said what it is yet is he this Anna? Is he this Anna? Fo- 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 folks, are we starting a podcast? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? I will be oh my I will God. be in the fucking hot ground before I do a fucking show about Jay goddamn Leno. You know how many episodes that fucking car show of his I've seen? Possibly oh. all of them. Wild. Why? Wild. Because fuck you. That's why, AJ. <laughs> I don't ask you about your life. Okay. Okay, that's true. <laughs> but you don't want to know about my life. Yeah, that's you, the thing. I was not prodding you about there. the boats. You just told me that of your own volition. <laughs> Jay Jesus. Lennon should do a show called Comedians and Cars Being Immolated. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is, he, is he okay? Just a little Jay yeah, Lennon attention right? here. Is he fine? I haven't heard anything since he got torched. Yeah. Have you seen him? <laughs> <laughs> I think comedians in cars getting immolated is the greatest <laughs> joke that's ever been said on this podcast. So funny. I, I don't know how we top it. I don't know where we no, go it's from over. here. We're done. We Goodbye. Talk- uh, no, because we have to keep talking we do. about we have fire to keep fireproof. Going. We have to keep going. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They would have looked at the car off the tracks. <laughs> and Jay Leno's underneath. They would have up a fucking like 20 ton steam car. <laughs> That's how Jay Leno was saved. A veteran came in and lifted the car off of him. Jay's calling out to the troop. You see me? You hear me? <laughs> I am in pain. Jay is next to the right car now. with like reassuring. I, I see you. I hear about you. <laughs> Gets him to fucking convert. Uh, um, oh. So, look, I I don't even know where we go from there. I guess we just keep fucking going because we have well, to. Well, the movie Porn. keeps fucking it going. It sure does. It does. Uh, just real quick, porno is like mostly mm. cool and good. The industry okay. is a little fucked up sometimes and weird, but sure. like independent Inherently, creators and the yeah. concept, the concept yeah. of enjoying people's nude bodies in a videographic form, 
totally fucking it's sick pretty cool. cool. It's pretty cool. Watching yeah. people yeah, I, have it, sex is kind of neat. It, <laughs> it turns out it's it something people something. like yeah. doing. Uh, turns yeah. out it's something we've been doing since the dawn of time. Yeah, yeah um, we were carving driftwood into the shapes of women so we could jerk off to them forever. Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> Oh, no, it, look, you're 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 not understanding, though, Audrey, you're not understanding the importance of purity, yeah. because if you're not pure, how can you become fireproof? I, I do. Mm. I do really like that. The love dare gives you like that was day 23 that they're like, you got to toss out the pornos. Right. And stop swallowing. Is that what they said? 23 days of jerking it. Uh, yeah. yeah, 20 Trying to make it go. Well, then you don't want to yeah, anymore. That's basically it's... an advent calendar of honking <laughs> off. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what, a gift. Day 24. what a gift. What a gift they've given us. For Christmas. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Oh, that's that's really... to us. A cum oh, is God, shot. You, oh, you just you just open every one of the advent <laughs> calendar and it's just more cum. I it's just like <laughs> just increase the you large open amounts it of and juice. Just oh, wait, I actually I actually have a little of, of, of me reaching into the advent oh, calendar. Yeah. yeah. Mm, let's hear it. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. You know something I just realized? Yeah. We mm. never see how the fires are started in this movie. No. And I think it's just Kurt Cameron rubbing his dick so hard <laughs> that he ignites Tinder. Weirdly, wow. there were a bunch of fires while they were making this movie. The house next door oh, to what? the house that they're burning down just happened to burn no down way. like two days earlier. Uh, also, and thank God Kurt Cameron was there to yeah. fix that problem. Also, yeah, yeah, on the yeah, day yeah. of the L.A. premiere of Fireproof, uh, someone tried to do arson to the church building. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. What? Yeah. Wait, like, for real? This yeah, wasn't, like, like a, a false Molotov flag? Molotov cocktail. Like, there was a bunch of gasoline in, like, the, the entryway. They had broken the front window. Holy shit. What yeah, the dude. fuck? Yeah. Did you, dude, did they ever find out who did it? It was, like, uh, a question. Who was the, pissed the only, off or something? The only, this is such a frustrating thing about a lot of these events. The, the easiest articles to find are the, like, the fresh ones. They're like, this right. just happened. There was a bottle found, yeah, yeah. and then I can't find right. any fucking follow-ups at all. Because yeah. no one follows up with yeah. anything because right. history is dead. Yeah. Well, that, no, that, it was the MPAA. Requires... They're going to get rid of all that goddamn <laughs> prayer. <laughs> Fucking Jack Valenti himself. <laughs> um, whether, whether you're talking about pornos or not pornos, the thing that you have to do eventually is get to the climax. And <laughs> that is what happens in this movie, right? Caleb tries like his one last try to fucking you know bring his wife back into the fold he gives her the good flowers but it's just not enough yeah. and oh, so man. we get a motherfucking montage yes. which i i just Ooh, need a montage. The, 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 the underscoring for the song at the very beginning sounds like falling slowly like they've taken that little yes I sang Falling Slowly along with it, and it works like gangbusters. And things that happen in this montage, you know, we get both of them, like, because it, it's fading between them, right? Like, they're both walking around the it same faded. table. It was already they're, over. We had the fade out. Wait, it was, no. nope. it was, it was 12 no. movies ago. No, is, no, we need a montage. This is not Bergman or Noah we, Baumbach, we get, whichever you want to pick. This is, uh, the marriage <laughs> ended. We get Catherine, the wife, standing by a fountain. We get Kirk Cameron sweeping up. We get the wife seeing the, the, the newly swept floor. We get the, um, we get the, the, the godly the old nurse who like <laughs> sees the wife cheating with Dr. Yes. Gavin oh, or yes. whatever. Shit. And we have to watch her pray for like seven uninterrupted seconds of silence. You gotta. Mm -hmm. Because again, that's what signals to you that she is upright. She is good. Mm -hmm. She is upright. Much like Michael, she is connected to the Lord and so you need to fucking listen to her. Catherine is just sick. I guess. And it's her allergies, this is, Josh. This is the yeah. only thing that actually saves the marriage is she gets sick. It's a fucking right. deus ex machina of her falling ill and him bringing her Chick-fil-A soup. Right. And they were <laughs> yeah. so and, excited. Uh, They're so excited in that commentary that they have Chick-fil-A soup because Chick-fil-A is a champion of marriage. Sorry, yeah. marriage. And these people are fucking. <laughs> I, I just need to say this, too. Like, these people are fucking swine. Yeah. You know, like Chick-fil-A for them is the absolute apex of what food can be. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. It's I fine. Yeah. It's, it's extremely fine. mid. It is it's just fine. It's not yes. Arby's. No, it's no Arby's. You they cannot have the meats. get a yeah. fucking. You can't get horsey sauce. No, and fucking no. no. You can't. Yeah. They, they they'd string you up if you asked for it. 
at Chick Fil A. Get seasoned <laughs> curlies. They make it look like an accident yeah. too. And their fries are bullshit. Chick Fil A has got bad oh, fries. Yeah. Low, low fries. tier More fries. Yeah. But so there's this. We have this scene right where Catherine is lying <laughs> sick in bed, and Kirk Cameron comes in, gives her the Chick Fil A. Yeah. And they they have a heart to heart. But what's so strange about this scene is something that we've been alluding to this whole time, mm-hmm. which is that Kirk Cameron will not kiss a woman other than his wife. Oh, ever. I didn't realize you were going to have that other clause in there. I thought it was just Kirk Cameron won't kiss a woman. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) What happens here is that you have this scene that touch her. I mean, like he doesn't touch her. He doesn't (laughs) fucking touch her, which it's like this is this is in order for this scene to land. From an acting perspective, in any way, shape, or form whatsoever, there needs to be some modicum of physical contact. Yeah. Because physical right. contact is how you express love, right? And so I, this this is something that I'm wondering uh, from you again, uh, Audrey and Donovan. Like, what was your reaction to this fucking, like, reconciling as she is lying sick in bed with her Chick-fil-A scene? Weird and detached, for sure. It felt like him just kind of, like... He's 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 talking to God. He's praying. He's he, he like kneels down at the one point, I think, when he's like apologizing or whatever and, and talking about finding God. And it is weird. It doesn't read like uh, like a scene between lovers. It reads like, right. I don't know. And I, I was going to say, like, taking care of like a sick parent or something. Yeah. But it's not even that yeah. you would like. You'd at least hug Give your mom. A hug or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it was. Yeah, so it feels like weird a sibling detached. thing, right? Yeah. Like it feels yeah, like yeah, you're yeah, taking yeah. care of like your your baby oh, sister. Oh, it's not or even that though, because again, like it's, if it was it your sibling, like there wouldn't be more into stranger. Either. Like again, like yes, this, yeah. Just, yeah. yes. yes. But the, he, he had, you have been charged by the government of the state of Georgia with looking after this fucking woman. And, <laughs> yeah. So when they do eventually reconcile and they kiss, he uses his wife as a stunt cock. Um, so right. that he can kiss her. <laughs> that's actually called whoa, the whoa, stunt. Whoa. Brian, Brian, that's called the stunt cunt. How <laughs> have you know? <laughs> hey! like, so that he can kiss that's her and not. D- or at least but, like, a half. Kirk Cameron's <laughs> wife cunt. is an actor. I don't know why they didn't hire her. And, yeah. Like, if you want to do Just a story well, because, about this because, marriage. Because they had to hire the fucking daughter of the pastor. <laughs> Yeah, that, no, that's genuinely why. Like, then yeah. fucking oh. hire her husband. Like, fucking do something no, so you can actually depict a goddamn marriage. Make Kirk Cameron the godly lieutenant at the yeah there we go oh, the, yeah. the, or, or the just like, the troop who shows up yeah that'd be a special cameo yeah. by kirk yeah, cameron a kirk cameron cameo what if at the end of this movie he dies in a fire oh wouldn't that be great <laughs> please please wouldn't let that be him well, then he be fireproof. yeah i have a note that i missed mm. uh uh hideous duvet <laughs> yeah Oh, it's awful. Hideous, oh, it's the Paisley worst duvet you've ever uh, seen. Oh, God. Terrible this, this, interiors, this goes, yeah. This goes back to the interiors, though, of that weird missionary house. Yeah. It's like every single fucking surface in this house has been scotch brighted. Yeah. But so you can do the missionary position on them. That's, That's right, right, Brian. Oh, ooh. <laughs> and the cum <laughs> just beads. It doesn't soak. <laughs> You can collect it for the advent calendar. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Oh, so, yeah. Audrey, Audrey, we, we've gotten pretty far in the movie. We're we're not at the end, oh. surprisingly, but we've gotten pretty far. <laughs> we sincerely Have you be. cried yet? Mm. Okay, not going to lie. When they yes. were doing the reconciliation at the bedside, okay. yeah. in between customizing my armored core, <laughs> yeah. I did feel a little mist coming on at that okay. point because he starts to break through, sure. right? Yeah, like he's this right, like right. shit, just total piece of shit. But she starts to kind of break down, and right. I don't, I don't know how much of it is just like the them selling the emotionality of it, which is zero percent of it because they can't act for shit. But <laughs> <laughs> I kind of felt what they were trying to do, and I was like, oh wow, they're kind of getting back together. Yeah. Well, he that, does that beautiful actually and, offer an unqualified apology, which is interesting. Interesting. That's yeah, yeah. That is true. That is true. Oh, I, there there uh, is something in here about like yeah, they, they they this this process has made him into someone who does these things unconditionally without qualification, without you know keeping score on these sorts of things. It turns out he's on day forty three. Of oh, the 40 days. Ch- but there's only, there's only 40 days. How can he oh, be on day 43? Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. It just made him into a good person. Oh, that and awesome. Christ. Ooh. 
How are there still 20 minutes yeah. left in this movie? We, the biggest jump scare of this yeah. movie. Yeah, I think I think the biggest, I think the absolute biggest jump scare was <laughs> when Kirk Cameron converts and mm. it's exactly halfway through. And you're like, yeah. we have yes, settled it. Yes, We're on yes. to act three now. Act two is really mushy. And oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This is like seven but, acts. Yeah, this is like Shakuntala. This is seven full <laughs> acts. This is a classic of of of, of Sanskrit theater. So it, it truly does not bear like describing everything that happens. What you need to know is that ultimately Catherine finds out that Caleb was paid for the home health aids for her uh yeah. demented yeah. mother. He, he um, didn't buy the, the boat, the, he bought the hospital bed. Yeah. Right. Which is a twist because up until this point, we had thought that it was Dr. Gavin who did it. Um, but no, like fucking 24 G's or whatever worth of boat money uh, spent on, you know, home health. Aids well, he couldn't for, buy the boat uh, anymore because he was going to get it off a website and he can't go to websites anymore because he mm, saw that milf. Uh, yeah, no, he saw true. that milf on the screen. He was like, I need to kill her with a baseball bat. <laughs> and <laughs> she's in the computer. <laughs> and so she cries, you know, she's being a real woman about yeah. it. Teared up a little bit there. Uh, okay. You know, okay. I, okay. Here's what I will say. Like, she is actually, I was surprised at how yeah. deeply felt her performance is on this side yeah, of it. Like, yeah. she, she's She's yeah. much better than Kirk Cameron. I don't like that this is what's happening to this character. Mm -hmm. She should be right. fucking leaving his ass. Oftentimes when you see these scenes of like people crying melodramatically, it, it's funny. This isn't funny, actually. Yeah. This is no. just like it feels grounded in a weird way. She goes off to the fire station to meet him. She tells him he's a good man. Uh, she's yeah, gonna get I, I saved tried by to clip, Jesus. I tried to clip this one too, but she takes such long pauses in between each right. sentence, and there's yeah. music underneath that I couldn't quite cut it together in a way that sounded good. But yeah, she she does her little "you had me at hello" thing. She's like, "If I, I liked your fit, yeah, yep. yeah, I liked your fit." And right. and they get their i the the one iconic <laughs> shot in the movie because they had to they had to use a stunt cunt. Um, <laughs> yep, <laughs> that feels really bad. I liked what I. <laughs> Now it just sounds like I'm calling a woman a cunt. Like, you know, this is like, a little different than saying stunt cock. Um, <laughs> you know, go back to saying yeah. stunt cock. I think because they fine. have to use the stunt cock, you know, they have to they have to hide her right. face. So it's silhouetted and we have the, the daylight coming through and, and they right. kiss. I do think it's funny that she shows up in red, the color of both sluts and uh, fire trucks. Mm. Yeah, because he's on, she's on fire <laughs> for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She I shows up in now. that red dress and she's like, Sam, I will meet you at the beach. <laughs> and everyone's like, no. I don't know who this is. I know there's supposed to be a twist about her, but I don't know who she is in the first place. Mads Mickelson. <laughs> and then she says, and then and then she goes on and says, I'll meet you at the beach ten more yeah, times. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, something yeah, yeah. else. Yeah, I mean that's it. That's the fucking movie. Uh, except except uh, what? Except. Oh god damn it, you're there's, right. It's not over. It's no, it's no, it's no, it is no, no, no. I swear to God. Okay. Because I, I had internet trouble this morning. I was trying to download the flick, right? Right. And it it yeah. downloaded right at around one o'clock. <laughs> and I'm like, Just okay, I have exactly two hours yeah, to yeah, watch yeah, this yeah. movie. I had some interruptions. I had to pick up my I had a, a bunch of beer door dashed over. I had to, you know, yeah, take a yeah. and stuff, yeah. and doing whatever. And then I get back and I'm like watching through the end of, and I'm like, surely nothing else happens. And I scrabbled through the end of this flick after the I, after the firehouse scene. That's when I started scrabbling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, well, it's uh, you get you get a epilogue, which is like a fucking walk in yeah. the woods. It's another like five or ten minute tulips. scene with Dick Caleb Cheney's and back. Dick Cheney. And again, yeah, um, turns out oh, yeah. there's a, there's been a oh, twist. Oh, there's been a twist coming ooh, this whole time. Yes. Ooh, ooh, oh, what is it? Ooh, what's the what could the twist oh, be? It turns he out. was watching porno and jerking <laughs> off and made him do the <laughs> and She did the journal. <laughs> yeah, oh, the journal. You know, his, oh, his mom oh, is actually these two <laughs> pastors. <laughs> and she wrote the journal and his dad rewrote it in his handwriting. Wow. What cuck. And wow. uh, hands it off to his son. But it turns out this overbearing mother who we only see in one scene, who we could see in this scene but we don't uh too bad don't. she's the wife of dick cheney i don't know what this, else she's doing at this point in time but they just couldn't get her on screen again mechanically sure would make a lot more sense if this final scene was him going yeah. for a walk in the woods with what his mom could, but no but kirk cameron is not gonna be on screen with a goddamn woman right yeah or even more <laughs> hilariously if he's walking with his his dad in the woods and then it's like well it actually wasn't me who wrote it son and then she appears from behind a tree <laughs> i did <laughs> 
<laughs> she's just I on wish. the cross. The movie <laughs> just shows <laughs> up there. The movie fucking hates the mom, and it was not yes. clear because so she's like much. concerned because the he's going through like a potential divorce and stuff. Yeah, she's like upset, and he's in a fire. Yeah. She's all this genuine concern, and he's like this this fucking mom of mine. <laughs> yeah. Answer is like this nagging like shitty yep. mom, but it's like hey, what are you fucking talking about? That's all that we get from her is her being concerned. Yeah, it's fucking weird. It's so fucking weird. But then it turns out she's actually the hero because she is the Kendrick brothers and wrote this hit book of theirs. Yes. Right. Yes. (laughs) And so he apologizes to her. And this is the moment that the directors of the movie say that's when most people start tearing up. Because that that mm. that moment where he apologizes to his mom did that happen for you, Audrey? Okay. Yeah, get, okay. a big, get a big shake of the head there for you, Audrey. <laughs> get me. Does not pass the Audrey test. Okay. <laughs> well, it's because it's bad. <laughs> I, 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 I think it's so funny that the wife is standing in the background of him apologizing to his mom, and the wife has no idea what's going on. She has she, she has not been her shit thinking for like the fact that months. the mom has yeah. written this right. book. Right. So all all she's seeing is that he, you know he and his dad come back from a walk in the woods. He's sobbing <laughs> and saying, "Mom, I'm so sorry," and hugs her. And all she does is stand in the corner and all. So cry like I don't. Did she read the script? <laughs> I hate this movie. Horrible. Make Just horrible. It stop. Okay, well, AJ, if it makes you feel any better, it's over now. Wait a it's, second! Oh God. <laughs> what? Shit, it's, look at, no, fuck! God it's damn still it. going. Yeah, baby. no, we have motherfucker. You just got caught. We, gotta, we gotta do the wedding. We gotta get yeah, they married. Took a, oh, epilogue yeah. on the epilogue, a coda, oh, and, I guess, and you know, where, yeah. you know, Kip sings always and forever. Napoleon rides mm. down on a horse. <laughs> uh, you get Lyle back to do a little talk about you know when you get mad, maybe just go for a walk for a little bit before you really get the argument going. Uh, yeah, no, Kirk, I'm, I'm Cameron, talking about a much better movie. The, the Mormon mm. classic Napoleon Dynamite. But yes, Kirk Cameron and his wife renew their vows and do not kiss. Uh, no, sir. That's the fucking end. Yeah. That's the uh, actual fucking yeah. end. You see the salt yeah. and pepper on top of yeah. a cake. We yeah. zoom out from the wedding and fuck. And, and, and the Kendrick brothers are there too. And there's like a bunch of, I don't know, wife cameos or something. And then, and right. then we see the salt and pepper on top of the wedding cake. And finally, is, it's yeah, over. I, actually, what is that conversation to or like, hey, we're going to renew our vows. Uh, by the way, we're going to put salt and pepper. So you get this. You got to keep mm. them together. Right, yeah. babe, you got to keep salt and pepper. Together. It's Let's just put like on us. The cake. Remember how our marriage almost dissolved like two months ago? Like, <laughs> want to commemorate that on the wedding cake? <laughs> but it is. Yeah, okay. it, we went through. It is that so, classic thing that we all know about yeah. that. You, you cannot separate the salt and pepper shakers. They famously famously are always enjoying. Yeah, yeah. That's the Thank point of salt and pepper. <laughs> Thank God this movie wasn't about teenage sex because that cake would be covered in used band-aids. <laughs> <laughs> that's Not really sure that good. Follow, oh, that's, that's really good. We had the metaphor of the rose that you everybody has a rose, mm. and if you pass the rose to somebody and they handle it, then some of the petals mm. will come off of it. Uh, yeah. How are you handling these roses? <laughs> Not very carefully. Oh, I just oh. grab it flower part <laughs> first. <laughs> flower part. So <laughs> this is, of course, for for Donovan and Audrey, our esteemed guests. Yes. Um. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you. It's um, <laughs> this was so long. Yeah. It's so <laughs> difficult to watch, and it. I am loath to say that I did. I got misty. I did it. No, at no point a tear did flow, but I did. I was affected emotionally by the performances more than the story. Yeah. Um and. I this is hard and I'm I'm not coming back yeah. if we're gonna do another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> we will never make you do one of these. No. Okay, no. No. I think you good, may good, have good. been emotionally affected by armored core. Like we can't rule yeah. that out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's true. Just real <laughs> quick, did, ever, of did everyone see the thing where it said um, it said cons: dry storytelling, demanding controls, unintelligible UI, and somebody tweeted that and just said, "We are so back." <laughs> <laughs> I felt shame watching this whole flick. 
I was watching in my room yesterday, a bright, sunny afternoon, and I parts would come on where I was like, I hope my roommate does not hear this through the door and I have to explain what I'm doing right now. And I actually went on a date last night and uh, the person was like, oh, you know, what have you been up to today? And I, I watched a hit Kurt Cameron flick, Fireproof. Have you heard of it? Uh, what happened to the date after that? Uh, we're married now, actually. Congratulations. <laughs> it works! <laughs> Can't first, argue with the results. I started the love dare on the first date, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do the love dare? You <laughs> kept doing it through 40 days. Break, break the notebook out. Yeah, I thought I thought it was uh, I thought it was miserable. Yeah. I think it's uh, all, all the fucking moral stuff we covered of just marriage is the most yeah. sacred thing in the world that must be preserved at all costs. It's a moral failing if that doesn't happen. That's fucking awful and deranged, yeah. and it's even worse that it's delivered through this just despicable fucking film. So <laughs> it was awful. Yeah, I, I think we. It's fair to say that we all suffered some psychic damage. Absolutely. Um, but we don't ever really want to leave the show, obviously, on that note. So <laughs> I guess Speak then for yourself, my follow-up, brother. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. But so the fo- Ryan is lighting the fires of Rubicon so right now. My, my, my follow-up question is: What should we take away from this movie in terms of things not to do, and what do better, healthier alternatives look like? in functional relationships uh know that you have the out like know that you'll be okay outside of a relationship and that that's an option that it isn't like a it, it, it it's not a fucking contract you signed for life i think that's a i don't want to go down an entire wormhole at the end of like the you know heteronormative marriage culture we live in uh but i think like largely the the takeaway should just be communicate your fucking needs with your partner yeah. consider their feelings talk talk about these things with them and that doesn't need to take the form of like this weird religious path that's happening parallel yeah. to what she's doing like fucking mm. talk to each other yes <laughs> god yes, damn yes. it and and yes. i think i think a corollary to that too if like me you sort of grew up in this world which i know many of our listeners did is that mm. just because you've absorbed the fucking toxic toxic energy of shit like this in your upbringing and even if earlier in you in your life maybe you made some relationship decisions structured around these principles that doesn't mean that you have to keep living that way and also it doesn't mean that those decisions that you made in the past were horrible or wrong necessarily you know Mm. life keeps moving forward The changes that you make in your life, the choices that you make in your life with regard to relationships, you can always be moving in a direction that is closer and more truly intimate, or you can be doubling down on the mistakes of your past in trying to fix something that maybe was built on a a, a difficult foundation that isn't what you were hoping for. That's also not necessarily a failed uh, pursuit, right? Yeah. Because I, I, th- that's just something that I wanted to say, because I think that you can see something like this and you can be like, well, this fucking sucks shit. I want to throw it all out and I want to disabuse myself of all of the bad choices that I made in my past. But maybe the choices were just choices that you made because you lacked the relevant information at the time. It doesn't have right. to dictate what you're doing going forward. And there's learning to take away from the mistakes or like attempted solutions. Like if you are in a relationship, I would, I was this in college that I kept together for another two years after it got really bad. Mm. There's something to be taken Mm. away from that. Like that sucked. It's traumatizing in its own right. But you also learn like, Oh, I didn't have to do that. Actually doubling down on things can, can make it worse. Can like not be to a good end. Yeah. I think yeah. the lesson to the opposite of this is like you can fucking leave and it yeah. is OK and it is good. It's the right thing to do sometimes for your and your fucking partner's health. Yeah. If things are just yeah. fundamentally incompatible instead of bashing your head against the wall for years trying to make it work. And then you build all this resentment and all of this yeah. stuff. It's the it's the fucking uh, uh, teenage stepdad. You can leave. Hit the bricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my yeah. relationship yeah. advice. <laughs> or or. 
you can stay together. But if you're staying together, make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. Make yes. sure it's because you want to be building something with the person who you are with. Which will require communication. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which will require you to actually yeah. decide what the fuck it is you want together yes. and then do that thing together. If your yeah. goal is to both have a career and a lot of money and a big house and a boat and a fucking, <laughs> you know, oh, if, you wanna, if that's what you want to do, you can do it together. Yeah. Yeah. But if that's not what you want to do, you don't have to do it together. Right. Mm. You can do it on your own. Go be on your own. Go forth or be together (laughs) in a way that makes sense for what you need. Just don't fucking do it for the sake of doing it. Just because you you signed up, you stood up in front of everybody and you said the God words. <laughs> God words. So now it's um, forever. Now you're fucked. You like I I think the pastor should turn to you and said, ha, 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 after, you sign, after you do your vows, and exchange rings, the pastor just be like, got you. You got your asses. You're done. And then disappear you're in a puff of smoke. Just like gone. <laughs> So, so Dono and Audrey, uh, standing here in front of all these people saying some God words, mm. um, would you like to declare some perhaps God words about uh, your podcast? Pod have words, anything you want? if you will. Some pod <laughs> words, yes. Pod words. It's a show about relationships. Uh, we give advice that's not like this movie. We are very queer friendly, uh, non-monogamy friendly. Like we're just kind of, we talk, speak to what an individual person needs. There isn't like a rubric of what needs to be there for relationships. Uh, but we got we people like writing about- typically. Yeah. And we got people who write in about gender questions. We talk about mental health stuff because we both deal with this too. Uh, mm. I would try to convey our show is like a blend of sincerity and very stupid humor. Mm-hmm. And I think it allows us to like yeah. tackle some pretty heavy topics sometimes without it being like very solemn and over the top. And that's like the cool yeah. feedback we've gotten from people. Uh, so uh, and it, and it, if I could gush about it uh, just for uh, a hot second, uh, Josh, uh, Josh recommended my first episode be the one y'all did with Alec Robbins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where that episode where, is fucking wild, dude. <laughs> I mean, where where in real time Dono is uh, dealing with some heartbreak. I and broke up with what, a partner two hours before we recorded that. Oh, episode. Christ. And, 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 and you still went ahead to do the episode. And what I found so shocking about it, not only your determination to record an episode, which <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> But it was also that I think it, it demonstrated what your show does best, which is this radical empathy, which is that you you all came together and like acknowledge that this heartbreak was there, but you work together to get through it. And it's it's genuinely like one of the most beautiful hours of podcasting I've ever heard. And uh, you. if you want a good starting off point, please go and check that out. Uh, and it's all up again. <laughs> yeah, it, it is not a full it, tier, it, just a little misty. It, it, it little is misty. it is truly a remarkable show, and I'm so glad y'all have been doing it for so long. And I, I can't wait to hear more episodes in the future. I forgot to say also RFTB.me, Radio Free Tote Bag, and other things. We got a Patreon with bonus episodes. Hell just yeah. look up Radio Free Tote Bag. Nothing else is called that. Yeah, Nothing yeah. Has yeah. ever been called that. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. Never <laughs> once. So get in there. We got the links down right there in the show notes. Go support Radio Free Tote Bag. Listen to their episodes. Subscribe subscribe to their Patreon. And if you want, you can subscribe to our Patreon too. It's patreon.com slash worst of all. Every other week we do a, a premium episode. Uh, and so if you want access to those and to our full back catalog, which now has over a hundred episodes in it, make sure to get on oh. patreon.com slash worst of all. AJ, you want to take us home? Sure. Um, so a lot of evangelical culture will try and convince you that you have to make your marriage fireproof, that you have to defend yourself against the onslaughts of the world and honestly, the onslaughts of your partner in order to make it work. Because, you know, as Audrey said, you said some God words in front of a large group of people. But I'm here to tell you that if you ever find yourself in a situation where you are married to Kirk Cameron, <laughs> Who is desperately trying to fuck a boat. Sometimes things deserve to burn. (laughs) I'm the worst of all possible AJs. I'm the worst of all possible Brian's. And I'm the worst of all possible Josh's. See you next week.